that's when Kate had his first echocardiogram and EKG, and they told us that Cade had transposition of the great arteries. And transposition of the great arteries is when your arteries are switched in your heart. I was devastated. I wondered if I would be strong enough to take care of him and all that it entailed. You can't imagine watching a child go through this. His heart is so special. He was one of the first ones at Children to have the 3D heart made. Prior to them going into Caden's heart again, they can go through and see what will work on Cade. It's amazing. He's a warrior. He doesn't really get nervous. He's got a resilience and a toughness to him that I just admire. He's very in tune to his body for being seven years old, and that's something that I try and teach him. Cadence was born at a really neat time where advances in medicine just seemed to go by leaps and bounds. And whereas the prognosis may have not been so great 25 years ago, I'm, I'm very optimistic that these people that I've met at Children's and the people behind the scenes that I'll never meet they just keep pulling off miracles and getting better and better and better. And if I could say anything to those people, it's just thank you, thank you, thank you. He's more than just a little boy. He's a heart hero. He's a brother. He's a son, a grandson. I'm going to come back. And he's a very, very, very smart little kid. If you donate, it doesn't just help the kids. It helps the whole hospital. Children's saved Kate's life. The teamwork that they have there is amazing. Every specialist, they all are one team, and they work towards getting Caden the care he needs. I love those people. Thank you for um, saving my life, and I will never forget you guys. Harley Davidson, where old school meets new school. Come meet the new guys today. Six News First Alert Weather, always alerting you. When it's time to take action, we issue a first alert day. Pinpointing when the storm will hit, what it will bring, and who will be affected. With one goal, to keep you and your family safe. Six News First Alert Weather is on your side. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Beardmore Subaru's first annual Best in Show. This Beardmore Subaru does impress me much. Just look at that sleek body. Uh-huh. And this Crosstrek has some spunk, that's for sure. Woo! After that show, there's only one place left to go. The dog park.
Welcome to Prairie Flower Casino Field at Ralston Arena tonight. The Omaha Beef officially open up season number 20 as they kick off the regular season against the Oklahoma Flying Aces. Good evening, everybody. Todd Walkenhorst with you. Kirk Heyer will be joining us shortly. As the Beef enters season number 20, the Beef entered the season with plenty of questions. Coming off a 4 and 8 season, the Beef have revamped the entire organization. And under new ownership, Ricky Birch, James Kerwin leads the squad with only two returning players from the end of the 2018 season. Coming out of camp, rookie quarterback Seth Sweet out of Concordia College won the battle of quarterbacks. He'll get the start tonight against Oklahoma. Sweet is a dual threat that has shown an accurate arm in camp, and he has the ability to take off on the ground whenever needed. Sweeta will be joined by veterans in both the offensive and backfield. And at wide receiver, Calvin Phillips returns to Omaha at the running back position and so far has had a solid camp along with veteran Drew Prohaska, who is an off-season free agent signing from Sioux City. He'll join Phillips as well. Veteran receivers Antonio Bray and Kane Farkerson will join rookie Kareem Jones as wide receivers as Kareem Jones comes from the University of Urbana. On defense, assistant head coach and defensive coordinator Marvin Jones, he has stacked his side of the ball. Watch out for Kwame Bell on the defensive line. Bell is probably Omaha's most prolific pass rusher, and he's had a field day last week in the exhibition game against the four-state fusion. The beef this week, they also spent extra time on special teams, and they also brought in a new place kicker this week, Zeke Aravalo, who has plenty of experience in indoor football, joins the beef for the first time here tonight. The opponent? The Oklahoma Flying Aces. Veteran coach Richard Davis has had a monumental effort in putting together a franchise from scratch, and as the expansion team will play their first game in history tonight, Davis is not only the head coach, but also part of the Oklahoma ownership. He's had to wear many hats during the last several months, but he's excited to finally put his team on the field tonight. And at halftime, we'll have a chance to talk with Coach Davis about putting together the first-year franchise along with co-owners of both the Flying Aces and the Beef, Craig Tyree. When we come back, actually in just a couple of moments here, we will talk with the head coach, James Kerwin, who we caught up with before the game. With thoughts of tonight's matchup, here's the head coach of the Omaha Beef, James Kerwin. Back, back at Prairie Flower Casino Field at Ralston Arena pregame. We're with the head coach, James Kerwin, and pregame number one, the regular season is here. It's the Oklahoma Flying Aces. And just talk about your starting 25 and your quarterback, Seth Suido, who won the job in camp. You know, we're real excited about our team right now. Uh, we've got a lot of young guys that are, are, are getting adjusted to the game. Uh, so uh, now we got some uh, serious competition with game one against Oklahoma. So, uh, you know, as a staff, we're, we're really looking forward to seeing how these guys compete tonight. So we, we, we you know, mix them with a couple of veterans and, and obviously our rookies, uh, you know, we'll, we're definitely going to see how it goes. With the way everything works out and the, the sportsmanship or gamesmanship of the league, uh, people are just starting to see your starting roster as we go into the first game. Talk about who's on the roster, who made it, and how you feel about the team overall. Well, starting with a quarterback, Seth Asuita, you know, he's done a great job in camp learning the system. Uh, he's uh, extremely confident in the pocket. He's Welcome to the Ralston awesome. Arena as we celebrate the 20th season of your Omaha Beef. Looking deep, lost it all.
rosters full of guys that have played at some pretty high levels. So I expect the best from them. When you, you play a team with a quarterback like that, he's a dual threat, and fans probably remember when he was here, you know, majority of their offense or a lot of their offense really came on broken plays, and that's just kind of the challenge that a, a dual threat quarterback like that presents. He is coming off of an injury, so we don't know exactly what he's going to bring to the field, but how does that make it more complicated, or does it for what you're doing defensively? Yeah, you know, uh, especially in this league, you know, a quarterback that can move well on his feet, that does present challenges, obviously. It depends on what you're playing in coverage. I mean, if you're manned up on everybody, you know, you can get drawn off by guys doing vertical routes, and of course he has a, he gets a little bit of space he can take off, but I think our defensive line will do a good job collapsing the pocket and then uh, maintaining integrity there as far as keeping him, uh, uh, you know, in the pocket. Um, but, of course, you know, again, he's a, he's a vet. He knows how uh, the space works, and uh, hopefully we can do a good job in, in, in stopping that from happening. The third side of the ball, special teams. Uh, it was a preseason game last week, but uh, did not even convert a kick uh, for points last week. Injured kicker as well in the early stages of that game. New kicker on the roster this week. You added a veteran. How do you feel about the kicking game? Yeah, I'm really happy to get Zeke here. Uh, he's proven been proven an indoor game for quite a while. So uh, for me, it's just about the timing, making sure our snap, hold, and kick is good. Um, hopefully, we uh, have had enough time to do that. Uh, Zeke's a, a vet, so. Uh, we'll be able to uh, hopefully accomplish that. Uh, our kickoff team, our kick return team, we've got great guys to return the ball, and, uh, and we've got a great group of kickoff guys. So uh, the goal is to try to, uh, you know, get them in a uh, in, in, uh, field position where they can't strike and, uh, you know, put po points on the board from a PAT and field goal standpoint and, and win the field position game. And last question before you go out, like you said, a pretty good mix of veterans and rookies on this team, youth and experience. What's your message to them going out on the field before this game? You know, we just uh, we have a game plan. Uh, since day one, we've we've worked on uh, our goal was to get better every day uh, and uh, achieve the one and zero, and that's what we're going to work on. And I, I think uh, this the, the, this team is hungry, uh, and uh, these guys are excited to play. And, and I'm really, really, really excited to see what they do tonight. We appreciate your time and good luck tonight, Coach. Appreciate it, Todd. That was the head coach, James Kerwin, with his pregame thoughts. And now back at the broadcast position, joined by Kirk Heyer. Hey, we've been waiting all offseason. We got a little taste last week with the preseason game, but it's ready to kick off officially season number 20, Kirk. Well, tonight, tonight's electric. I mean, great crowd coming in. And uh, as always, uh, with the dancers, the rump roasters and everything, I mean, they put on quite a show. Uh, I always tell, tell people it's like, a, you know, a... A circus goes on, and the football game is in there, too. So, yeah, it's like a nightclub, a rock concert, uh, open bar. Well, not open bar, cast bar. It's a good time out here at Prairie Flower Casino Field at Ralston Arena. They cut the roster down to 25 since the last time we were with everybody. And uh, some difficult choices, but I think the big news coming out of camp was the performance of quarterback Seth Suida winning that starting job. Yes, yeah, Seth, I, you know, I, I had a chance to be in practice a few times and, and, and see him, and he's... Uh, he will pull the ball down and run. I mean, that's I think that's his his uh, greatest strength, uh, being able to 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 evade people. And uh, he, he's also a good passer. But it, it, being a dual threat quarterback is a is a big big plus. Here's a game that Omaha would uh, expect to be at least favored in. This game wasn't on the board in Las Vegas, but you're playing against a team that's never even been on the field before. The expansion franchise in Oklahoma, the Flying Aces, here tonight. They expect to try to establish a run game and take control early. Well, sure they do, and I'm sure you know, as people from Nebraska know that uh, Oklahoma, there are some good football players down there, and I really know, looking at the roster, don't know where all the people hail from and, and so on and so forth, but I'm sure they'll be very representative. Head coach Richard Davis, as we mentioned in the pregame, uh, not only the head coach, but he's also uh, part ownership and part everything. You know, it's a one-man crew down there. He's wearing a lot of hats. He, we talked to him. We'll talk, play that interview at halftime. Uh, but excited to get on the field. There's just so much that people don't know that it takes to, to get an organization put together. And, and uh, it's a lot to do. And we'll see how it turns out and what they put on the field tonight. Yeah, and the other thing tonight, you know, we, we came out with, with uh, three different uniforms. And we're going to take a pause and let you watch the festivities as we prepare for our national anthem.
Just moments away from kickoff of game number one here at Ralston Arena. It's Omaha Beef and the Flying Aces of Oklahoma out of Enid, Oklahoma. And Kurt, three games to kick off, three regular season games to kick off the CIF regular season tonight. A couple exhibition games as well. This is obviously the big one for the Beef fans. They've been waiting and ready to get on. Again, how do you prepare for a team that, you know, has no history? Yeah, it's tough. Like I said, they were watching some things that the coach had done up at Bismarck and so on. So they have a little bit of an idea. Uh, defensively, uh, coach, has, uh, I'm sure he has them well prepared. Uh, they're going to do a good job. We've got some good, stalwart people up front in the defensive line, and that's where it all starts. And I think we're going to be okay. We're going to see a good ball game. Hopefully, uh, kind of from last week, uh, first uh, our first drive of uh, <laughs> one yard for the touchdown uh, defense played exceptionally well and uh, looking forward to it uh, I just uh, want to throw kudos that was a wonderful wonderful national anthem that was a good anthem very well done very 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 well done two other regular season games on opening weekend here in the CIF Wichita Force visiting Duke City they'll be kicking off shortly as well Salina on the road against Amarillo they should be just underway. We'll try to get some score updates throughout the evening, but thanks for joining us. We are just about ready to go between the Flying Aces and the Omaha Beef. Last week, Omaha had a tune-up as they hosted the four-state fusion in exhibition play. Not really challenged Kirk Heyer as they rolled through them 70-6, to six. and as you mentioned, uh, a couple of drives starting right on the goal line and uh, didn't get a chance to really run a lot of their offense and, and see what they have. So I know Chuck Wright is ready to uh, unload a few more plays and see exactly what he has going into the season. Yeah, they, uh, here again, you know, we talk about Kwame Bell being with being experienced, being a really fine defensive end. He's the one that got it started. Uh, their first possession, he came through, tackled him on the one yard line for our, uh, the turnover, and uh, it was a, uh, a fairly easy touchdown. Uh, well, it, Offensively, offensively, we had a lot of really short drives. I mean, our defense put a stop to them. Um, 
the four, uh, four state fusion, obviously, they did problems a little bit with uh, with their handoffs and so on and so forth and their timing. Um, quite a few sacks, a lot of fumbles. Kwame Bell, a veteran indoor player, played last season in the IFL with Cedar Rapids, was part of uh, Marvin Jones' team out there in Cedar Rapids where he was head coach last season and, as we mentioned, had a had pretty much a field day as he rushed at will against Fort State last week in exhibition play. It'll be interesting to see how he matches up now against some similar athletes here against Oklahoma. Oh, very, very much so. And, and like I said, we're going to see uh, what goes on here at the first drive and uh, kind of see what's happening, see if they have any tricks up their sleeve. And uh, it's going to be it's going to be very, very exciting. Uh, bring about the, uh, the point of... Uh, New uniforms. Um, this is the first time way back when, remember, the B first came in, they were wearing the silver. Big a long North. time since we've seen the silver out on the field. Yeah. They look sharp, don't they? Oh, they, they look, it looks great. It looks great. We have the uh, the ability to uh, change in and out and mix and match and so on and so forth. So they really, they look good. Um, the arena is, is looks great. Opening coin toss, you'll see the captains out there. Oklahoma has one and will defer. You see Joshua Floyd out there picking up the coin, former Omaha Beef quarterback. Last season played uh, with Dodge City, had some stops in Salina, has bounced all around this league. But, hey, it's a veteran, and, you know, that sometimes is some of the more difficult uh, guys to control. If you remember where he was in Omaha, here's a guy that got a lot of his yardage on broken plays. So somebody you have to contain and try to shut down and not let him start running around. Well, I'm sure of that, and, and, and like I say, Coach Coach Marvin, he knows what, what's going on. He's seen him before. We know what's going on. Um, they've, they've got some things uh, in their defense to be able to control those things. I mean, it's not, uh, it's going to be nothing new for them as far as the coaching and seeing what's going on with that. So, uh, Joshua Floyd will be also testing a knee that he's had some injuries with over the uh, over the off season. So we'll be interested to see if he still has the speed that he had last time he played. Yeah, that's that's true. I, that would tell, we won't be able to see till the, uh, their first possession, but we'll find out. So we're ready to go. Omaha's on the field. They will get the ball first in the backfield. Waiting for the kickoff return, Antonio Gray and Javon Bell wait at the goal line. And for Oklahoma, the kicker is Brent Mathis out of Bethel College. As it's the beef and the flying aces here on opening weekend, it's CIF action week number one. And you see Mathis putting that ball on the tee sideways. Looks like they'll try the squib kick, which has become popular in this league. Puts his foot into it, keeps it on the ground, spinning kick, aiming for that sideboard. It's picked up on the far side by Bell across the 15. Out to the 18-yard line. Decent field position for Omaha to start. Yeah, that is, like you said, Todd, that, that type of kick has become very, very popular in this. You kind of bounce around and make it hard to pick up. Uh, ideally, for years, years past, the... Uh, they would always try to kick to the back wall and try to drop it right in there. But uh, we will see what the Big O is going to do here. Seth Sweden leads his team out on the field, the starting quarterback for the 2019 season, rookie indoor quarterback out of Concordia College, four-year starter at Concordia, led his school to the playoffs, first time in school history, during his season season. First down for Omaha. As the season is underway, puts the men into motion. They'll keep it on the ground. Actually, they fake it. Sweet, it tucks it under. Across the 20, out to the 22-yard line. Good for four or five yards on the first play of the game. So a little fake handoff on first down. Yeah, it's, you know, to get started, it's good to, to, to kind of take a hit. You, you get accustomed to stuff being out there. Warm-ups are all over. Now it's time to go. They spot the ball at the 21-yard line. Be second down in seven. Bell in motion on the far side. 
Kane in motion on the near side. The handoff is underneath and across the midfield as Antonio Bray takes the ball to the 25-yard line. It showed the ability that the zone blocking that with the play originally started to the left side, took it, cut back on the pitch. Uh, good read on the defense. Bring up the first third down of the season. Third down and three at the 25 midfield, Omaha. We'll see what Chuck Wright has in store. Kareem Jones lines up on the line, men in motion. They will throw on third down and off the hands of Jones out of bounds be fourth down. So Omaha, I'm not even sure if they had a fourth down last week, Kirk. No, I and mean, then of course the other team though didn't have one or one or two firsts is all. Um, and we see head coach James Kerwin will leave his offense on the field with a fourth down call. And playing aggressive against Oklahoma here. Not gonna play the field position. See if they can pick it up. Otherwise, the Flying Aces are gonna have good field position. Good. Sweeta puts the men in motion. He drops back. There is a flag. It's complete to Kane. Farkerson. He gets to the 20-yard line. That'd be good for first down yardage, but we'll see what the infraction is. I think we're going to have a legal defense, Kirk. Yep. yep. They called yep. offsides on Oklahoma, so credit... Farkerson with the completion out to the 20-yard line, pickup of five yards, move the chains, and the first first down of the season for Omaha. Coach was a little upset. He's, he's very demonstrative on their own side. <laughs> so James Kerwin, first big decision of the season, goes for it on fourth down. He's into Flying Aces territory at the 20 with a fresh set of downs as this... We see Sweeta go under center for the first time tonight. We won't see a lot of that. Here's the oh, pitch out to Bell. Inside the 15, inside the 10. He's dragging some tacklers with him as he gets down to the five-yard line. Great individual effort by Javon Bell. And they're going to be in the red zone first to goal. Very much so, boy. He just raised up from center and just fired that ball out there. And they were on him. So you won't see a lot of that on the Chuck Wright offense lining up underneath center. Uh, kind of showed a pass play, you would kind of think, but quick pitch out to Bell, and he's he's dangerous when he gets in the open space. Yeah, the the, the, the pistol offense and stuff—it's going to give us a quarterback that little bit extra time. But they were so quick with that with that short pass. Bray lines up in the running back position. Three wide receivers. They're going to give it to Bray right up the middle. He finds the goal line. Touchdown, Omaha. Oh, Antonio Bray from five yards out. He saw the hole open up in the middle, and he took advantage, and the first six-pack is on the board for Omaha. Richard Davis, head coach of Oklahoma, not happy with his defensive line on that as you see that replay, and that was a big hole big that Bray hole. had. He said, fake to the left, come back to the right, right down the field. So we mentioned off or uh, off week transaction was the addition of Zeke Arvalo. He'll come in to kick for the first time for Omaha. The extra point is down. Man, that took way too oh. long. He kicked it into the feet of the defender. But there is a flag on the play, and we'll see if he got a head start that led to that. You know, last week we saw we saw probably three or four blocked extra point kicks. In the legal defense. It will be an illegal defense, but again, something that we saw. It's taken a long time to get that kickoff, and they're going to have to improve that. So that'll be half the distance, make it a shorter extra point. And Zeke, with the eight yard end zones, will be trying this from about 17 yards out. Snap is down, placement's up, and it is good. 11.28 remaining here in the opening quarter of play. Omaha drives down the field to take a 7-0 lead. And a nice offensive drive for the Beef to start out the season. It was. It was just very methodical. They went down. And uh, the running game, you know, probably picked up more than more. It was more than uh, half of the distance. Talking with the coaching staff before the game, 
They wanted to keep it on the ground. You hear that a lot, especially if you think you're going to be favored. The conditions of the game are going to dictate. I mean, just because you want to do that doesn't mean you always can, but they did set the tone and were able to move the ball on the ground. So, so far, so good as far as the game plan goes. It's the same thing in football. No, no matter if it's 11 man, 8 man indoor, if you can run to football, you can win more ball games than you're going to lose. So, Omaha out in front, 7 to nothing. You know, beef fans, there's one thing that they have not done in 20 years, and that's get that championship. They'd like to do that in season number 20. Starts one game at a time, and expectations, rightfully so, are high, but people got to remember 2018. This team was 4-8, and eight, so there was some work to do. It was a good sign to see them come out and drive down the field. Yes, the first possession to take it in is great. Arivalo will put it on the tee conventionally and kicks it off. Here's a high end over end kick. He's aiming for that goal line, puts it just inside. It's fielded inside the end zone. Nice move across good the cover, 10, then cover. stacked up by Omaha. On the return for Oklahoma was Andre Taylor Jr. Found a little bit of room on that near side, but got stacked up. Good job on special teams for Omaha. And Oklahoma will have the long field as they'll start at their own 14. So if you've been to the slaughterhouse, you know this is when it starts to get loud. And last week they gave away a thousand cowbells thanks to our friends over at Raising Canes. You don't have to give them away. The, the fans tend to have them already. But you're hearing them and uh, fans are ready to go here on defense. Offensively for Oklahoma, we talked about him in the pregame. Here's Joshua Floyd. He's only about five foot nine, but can be elusive. A veteran, he knows what he's doing out there. He'll fake uh, it on the first play. He's going to test that leg immediately. Gets out near midfield, and that's what the fans like to see with him. You saw him sell out and go for the 20-yard line. Brought down just short, but he's not afraid to stick his head down there and get some contact. No, and they defensively, Kwame was... He was he was after him. I mean, he, he and uh, just a little bit shallow on the pass rush. You got to get upfield a little bit farther. Pick up about five yards on the play. Be second down and five for the Flying Aces. Empty backfield, four receivers. That's tough to do in eight-man, Kirk. Puts two in motion. Floyd wants to throw. Has a completion. Oh, no, 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 Crouch it field. Breaks one tackle. Breaks another. And down near the 10-yard line. And Marvin Jones is not happy with what he saw on that play. Nice completion by Joshua Floyd. And it's going to be first down and 10. They'll spot it at the 12. The so Flying Aces trying a little up-tempo up and respond to the opening touchdown by Omaha. They're in beef territory at the 12. Floyd wants to throw. Nice slant is complete. Down near the five-yard line. Josh Stewart on the completion. Picked up about five more yards inside the 10. They actually spied at the seven-yard line, be second down. Yeah, they've shown a good short passing game. You know, five yards at the clip still is going to move the ball. It's going to move the chains. Floyd talks to Coach Davis, brings the play into the huddle. Opening drive in franchise history for the Oklahoma Flying Aces trying to respond to an opening drive touchdown by Omaha. Floyd will go under center now. And we have a whistle in the backfield. It's a delay of game. They took too long, and that'll back them up five yards. So mental error. We had seen the Flying Aces running up tempo. We see Coach Davis there on the sideline trying to remind his offense that's what they want to do. Took their time on that play. And the play clock expired. Back them up five yards. Be second down and ten. Three substitutions. Three new substitutions and receivers and a running back. Kwame Bell, we've been talking about him. He's lining up on the left side of the defense men in motion Floyd back in the gun he wants to throw on second down it's complete nice tackle in the open field by Taylor Hawkins and we're gonna have a third down for the flying aces you know talking with uh, with coach Davis during the offseason and before this game you know 
you know they think they're the underdogs, but you expect them to be aggressive and, you know, really have nothing to lose. You have to figure this is four down territory already in this game. They, they seem to be going for the, more for the short pass, the five yards at a time, and hoping for the yards uh, after the catch, the yak, you know, so. Here's third down. down. Yeah. Oh. To the end zone, it is complete, and Oklahoma responds with a touchdown completion from Joshua Floyd to Andre Taylor Jr., and the Flying Aces have pulled within one pending the extra point. They picked on the linebacker. Taylor did a good job. You mentioned, Kirk, they've been kind of dinking and dunking and looking for those short passes down the field. That time they get Taylor out in the flat, open and complete for the touchdown. Brett Mathis comes in. Oops. And they're missing a player. They only got seven out there. Actually, yep. Now there's eight. They're missing a Oops, put your hat missing on. a lineman. They're there now. Play clock down to ten. Mathis steps off the extra point. Oh, bouncy snap. It's to the kicker. Fire, fire, he's fire. He's going to try and throw it back. There's a lineman open. I don't believe he's eligible. It bounces around, and they call it incomplete. So a bad snap helps the beef keep the one-point advantage. And with 8.09 remaining here in the first quarter, it's Omaha ahead 7-6. to six. And Kirk, you know, once we get into these regular season games, that's what you're going to see is a lot of offense. And it's going to be a... It's going to be a matter of which team can make just two or three stops during the game that's going to end up winning these contests. Well, it's good, too. I mean, it's, that extra point is very, very important, to, you know, to be able to get that. So, you know, last week uh, we mentioned the, the beef did not kick for any points successfully. Uh, and... and you're chasing that point now for the rest of the game, right? You know, so next time you come down, you know, do we go for two now? You you have that decision going on now the rest of the game. And we've seen plenty of, if you've been a beef fan over the last few years, uh, we mentioned the team was 4-8 and eight a year ago. But, you know, a lot, of those, a lot of those games came down to one point or one possession. Yeah, so it is. Kicking game is very, very important, no matter what level of football. Oklahoma showing that, you know, I think they're content trying to shorten that game up a little bit. They did play up tempo, but they're trying to short passes, ball controlled, try to get it down there. It worked for them that time as they start from their own 14-yard line and first drive in franchise history, good four touchdown. Well, if you look at what they did on the offense, they, they switched, they went with three and three. They changed running back receivers down there. I think that their offense is predicated on, on, you know, yards after the catch. What they're trying to do is come out quick and uh, depending on guys to, to break tackles and make the extra yards. Richard Davis has been around not only the indoor but the, high, uh, the, the college ranks as well. And, uh, you know, that's that coaching experience, knowing, you know, you got coached to your personnel and, and a team that, you know, hasn't played a lot together. That's what you do is you try and find the safe stuff and take advantage of their strengths. Right. And this stuff, too, I mean, obviously their first drive, they're going to come out. They, they're going to know that the defense is going to be hyped up and coming after them. And they took advantage of it. So Mathis will kick off for Oklahoma. This time he sets the ball upright. Javon Bell and Chris Perry back deep awaiting the kickoff we'll see if they put it up in the air this time mathis will keep it wow. on the ground it's a bouncer it's picked up at the 20 yard line into flying aces territory and brought down at the 20 a big stop on the play but it's gonna be very good field position for omaha as the linebacker daniel patterson was the upfield man who picked up the ball and got 10 more yards well we could live with 20 yard drives all night you know we Field position is such a big part of this, and and what's really come out of style is that kickoff in the air because if it goes over that back board, it comes out to the 25. We, right. We'll talk about that more if you're not familiar with that. So we see a lot of teams trying that squip, trying for the field position, but then you give a field position like that, that's obviously not the goal. So Sweet will bring his offense out. One point advantage here midway through the first quarter of play. Lines up under center. And he hands oh. it off straight up the middle across the 15, down near the 10-yard line. And 
and a nice job there on the handoff. Offense based pretty much on misdirect, you know, misdirection. Play looked like it was going right, came back left. 13 yards on the carry. Calvin Phillips. On first down, and we'll see if he gets it again. He lines up in the backfield. Men go into motion. Sweet is under center. This time, they tried to give it to Bell on the sweep, but a little bit of motion before is going to be an infraction. Illegal procedure on the beef. And that will go against Omaha and put him back. Bell, though, on that sweep. Had some room across that far side, but it'll all come back. So back it up five yards. Be second down. And about eight. Sweeta back in the gun. Bell and Farkerson in motion. They'll keep it on the ground. It's to Phillips inside the 15. Back near the 12 yard line once again. And another third down for Omaha. They had quite a convoy too with the high motion. They had three men out and quick pitch to the right. Omaha finds themselves in a kind of a unique situation indoor. Really almost have three running backs on the roster they're carrying right now. You got Calvin Phillips, and then you got Antonio Bray who can play a, a running back in a wide receiver position. But you also have the veteran Drew Pahaska, who's been playing most recently with Sioux City. So lots of options in that running game for James Kerwin and Chuck Wright. Men go in motion on third down. Sweeta wants to throw. Oh, now tuck it under, goes. wide open inside the 10. Tuck it, the tuck five. It. Oh. And gets some contact. But he gets right back up. It's going to be first down and goal for Omaha. You yeah. said Seth doesn't mind putting it on the ground. And, or running yeah. on the ground with the legs. And he showed it right there. Took a little contact as well. Yeah, he saw it right away and took it. So that's uh, first down and goal, Omaha. Trying to add to a one-point advantage. Under six minutes to go here. Quarter number one opening game of the 2019 campaign. Beef break the huddle. Play clock's down to 10. Sweet under center once again. They've been running out of this formation earlier. Here's the handoff to Bell. Bell finds Touchdown. the goal line. Touchdown. Omaha. So that's the play we saw Omaha try to run, but had the legal procedure a little bit earlier in the drive. That time they give it to Bell. And like you said, they've got that offense design. They usually have some blockers in front of them, and Bell takes advantage and gets into the end zone for another six. Well, Coach Wright came in with you know, his offensive philosophy, and he definitely has the people to do what, what, the, what his plan is. Uh, blocking schemes and, and uh, the misdirection and, uh, right now, and, and the running quarterback. Extra point pending for Omaha. Snaps a little wide. They Boom. get it down, and the kick is up. So there we go. And it's good. So Omaha now up by eight. Makes it 14 to six. Two drives, two touchdowns for Omaha on schedule on the offensive side of the ball. Yes. Now we we'll hope to see kickoff. First time they did try to kick it high and get good coverage. Um, here again. Hopefully they're going to try to get that ball toward that back wall, I think, because we had excellent coverage on that kick, which was taken about the goal line. You know, uh, last few seasons and, uh, well, actually several seasons, it's been a while since Omaha's had a really solid, dependable kicking game. Yeah. Uh, Omaha decided this week to go out and bring a veteran kicker into the mix so far he's shown you know and you mentioned it's such a big part of the game that people overlook uh to get those automatic extra points and we'll see how consistent he is if they get some field goal opportunities here as well well yeah there's a lot there's a lot more things that can go wrong with a 40-yard drive as far as as the offense is concerned so uh, hopefully we can get him deep this time again so Zeke will tee it up. Andre Taylor Jr., who had the touchdown on the last drive for the Flying Aces, awaits in his own end zone. As 
as the Flying Aces would like to answer that beef touchdown. A little sideways kick. He catches it on the fly at the one-yard line across the five to the ten. He's got some room to 15 to 20. Tries to get around Chris Perry and meets him at the Omaha 19-yard line. Nice return for yeah. Taylor. Line drive kick. I mean, he caught it on the run, and he had, he had a head of steam. Thirty yards on the return for Andre Taylor Jr. and the Flying Aces with much better field position this time will start in beef territory at the 19-yard line with 5:21 remaining here in the first quarter, trailing 14 to six. We'll see what Floyd does at quarterback. Four receivers. No running backs again for the Flying Aces. They looked off sides that time. There's the flags. That's another foul back to the flags. You know, Kirk, sometimes you get a half yard or so off of that high motion, but it looked like they were across the line of scrimmage, and the officials agreed and blew it dead. They were there, but here again, just running a, a five-yard five yard hook. Good work, big man. Let's keep it up. It's where they wanted to go. So back it up five yards for Oklahoma. Be first down and 15. At the Omaha 24, see Marvin Jones barking out the defense. Same formation for Oklahoma. Floyd wants to throw. He's got it complete play, across the near play. side. And immediately is met by that Omaha defense. Kwame Bell on pass coverage. Maybe, uh, well, no, they're going to mark him right back at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. They defense, good play, swarm to the ball. They had five guys on the, on the receiver. Second down and 15. Floyd wants to throw on second down. Bell almost gets to him with a pass rush. We got, got flags him. going down the field with a hold. That's going to be on Omaha. They tried to isolate the middle linebacker again. Saw Bell get some good pressure on Joshua Floyd that time, and looks like he may have even got up a little slow, but the penalty is going to go against Omaha. Cody, on defense, number 42. It'll be a 10-yard penalty. Well, he did, unfortunately, and first down. unfortunately, he was beat. He did grab him. Um, but that's that's awful tough play for a middle linebacker to run with a wide receiver that far down the field. Those linebacker positions is where we've seen Oklahoma trying to test Omaha so far. Floyd under center. They'll run the sweep on the near side. That's Taylor. And he's met and brought down. No gain on the play. As Chris Perry led the led the defense on the tackle. See the teams mixed up a little bit early. Or no history between the two. Of course, a lot of these guys have seen each other throughout these leagues, reintroducing themselves here in the first quarter. Yeah, you get a receiver down here when they got the receiver up against the wall, and you get five guys and give him a little bit of a pound and. False spot just inside the 14-yard line. Second down and nine. Beef trying to protect an eight-point advantage. Men in motion. Floyd to throw. It's complete on the near side. And breaks a couple of tackles fighting for that goal line. The Beef stack them up. Must be first down for Oklahoma. Inside the five, first and goal. So we talked about the veteran quarterback. I mean, he, he can read those pass routes and coverages and he's taking advantage nothing long so far it's all been short but oklahoma has been effective moving the ball down the field so far be first down and goal two yards out play clock down to 10 for oklahoma they're going to have to hurry it up. Floyd looking to change the play. Wide receiver on the far side. Three men in the backfield. One in motion. Just gets it off. Bobbles a snap. Tries to retreat to the line of scrimmage. May got a half yard. They'll spot him down at the one. It'll be second down and goal. A little bit of a their version of an elephant backfield. They have two linemen lined up in the backfield. 
Baltimore team that's been running a lot of empty so far to throw three running backs in on the play. That's their goal line package. May have gotten it if the snap was clean. Second down and goal one yard away. Floyd under center. He'll hand it off to the running back. No. He's stacked up immediately. Trying to second effort. Reaches across the goal line. If he was down, I was going to say, if he was not down, that's going to be a touchdown. And the lineman on the near side is going to give it to him. They had him stacked up. I thought that would be a whistle. Never heard Never. the whistle. Forward progress, you could make an argument, was stopped. But the whistle did never blow, and they kept fighting. And uh, give it to him to have the wherewithal to reach that ball across. That's what gave him that touchdown before the play was dead. And the Flying Aces are within two, but they will send the kicker out to try and make it a one-point game. And the Beef want to challenge that. They threw their flag out. But I'll be honest with you, Kirk, I'm not sure what there is to challenge unless they're going to say that he was down, the actually down, down, before he reached across. Because reached you can't charge or you can't challenge the uh, forward progress, right? Right. That, that would have definitely have to be if see if his, his knee was down. So the interesting thing was the head coach, Richard Davis, was actually having heated words with uh, the head official. Vernon Brakefield on the near side while they're calling the touchdown, so I'm not sure what his <laughs> his argument was on the touchdown play, but they're going to go review this to see if he happened to be down well, they before def you're in. They definitely had, you know, three, four seconds, they had him held up for sure, so you don't know if it was just a slow whistle or not. Well, that was not challengeable, but they are reviewing it at the press box. As it stands right now, Oklahoma is within two points, 14 to 12, with 136 remaining here in the first quarter of play. Both teams have uh, driven all the way down the field in their first two possessions. This is kind of an interesting challenge, Kirk, also, because if you, you win the challenge, they're still going to have the ball just inside the one yard line. Inside the one yard line. And that was a, what, that was a third down play? No, I believe it was second. So we'll get this all sorted out. They are checking it out. You know, the challenge rules in the, in the CIF, uh, you're limited to the arena footage that's available so that you know it's it's not the nfl you only have a couple camera angles so we'll see what they can see on that if you're a beef fan you probably remember that uh, beef season ended on a challenge last year on a field goal that was initially called no good as it bounced off the uprights play was challenged against bismarck and after several minutes of review uh, called good in game over in overtime That ended Omaha's playoff hopes And capped their season at four and eight Try and see if they can make a replay go their way here And uh, the fishing crew taking their time checking it out Kirk But they got the ball posted on the two-yard line It's laying down So Enough to spend some time checking it out, and they have reached a decision. And let's see what the call is. Let's see what White Hat Vernon has to say. Lost the challenge. So the touchdown is confirmed. That's going to be a tough one probably to win unless there was something very conclusive, obviously, of being down. But and they didn't ask us. They did not ask us. In fairness, we may not have had the best position for that particular play. But either way, looking to make it a one-point game. And that one looked like it was nearly blocked. But it is up. And it is good. 
So Oklahoma responds with a touchdown of their own. Both teams, two possessions, two touchdowns. And we have a 14-13 contest here late in the first quarter of play. Lots of offense, and that's what, uh, you know, indoor football often is all about. Omaha has Oklahoma Flying Aces tonight. Kind of some quirky scheduling as uh, they'll have their first bye of the season this week coming up after the week one contest. But then Kirk, throw trip, headed to Sioux City to take on the Sioux City Bandits who are playing their exhibition game tonight at the Tyson Event Center against the Sioux City Stampede. Semi-pro outdoor team in Sioux City. In the same league as the Omaha Stockman here in town. This will be the first time we get to see what Sioux City has for the 2019 season. But that will be two weeks from tonight, first Saturday in April. April 6th, up in Sioux City, next time the Omaha Beaver in action. Omaha 14, Oklahoma 13. Third kick return of the game for Omaha. Chris Perry, Antonio Bray await. It's another bouncer, and they aim for the wall. That one will go out of play. And since it did bounce in bounds, the kicker celebrates as that was his objective. No return. And uh, will be spotted where it went out of play. Looks like it's going to be about the 12 or 13 yard line. So, reminder for fans if you have no plans tonight and are at home, for whatever reason you're not here, uh, post game party will be at the Firewater. Firewater Grill, that is located at 72nd and Grover Street. Join the beef players, fans, and. Uh, coaches there and remember the promotion if the beef win that's goal number one right Kirk that's it and hopefully they um, they can uh, recreate the, <laughs> the atmosphere we had last week it's a free beer for every point the beef score right now they are at 14 but most importantly need to get that win Sweda under center and oh. motion early it looks like Oklahoma jumped off sides and uh, Looks like uh, Omaha is really selling it on that far side, Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> Terrell Johnson made sure he, the officials knew he had some contact there. Junebug got hit right in the face. <laughs> Offensive line for Omaha. Junebug, Akin Melandun. He's the returning veteran on the offensive side of the ball for Omaha. Skyler Prohl is lining up on the left side along with Terrell Johnson out of Kansas State on the right side. They'll keep there it on the go. ground right back up the middle. And the first man nearly missed, but a great run by Antonio Bray into Oklahoma territory. Good for 14 yards. Another Omaha first down. Omaha has seen those holes between the tackles though early on, Kirk. They have, and that's here again, crossing action in the backfield. Running clock in indoor football. We're under one minute to play in the opening quarter. Omaha. Touchdowns on their first two drives. They're looking for another one. They are in Flying Aces territory. First down at the 22-yard line. Sweet will stay under center. Here's that fake sweep. He's going to drop back. He wants to run, throw. Run, Maybe run, he'll run, keep run. it himself. He's got some room. Sees the 15. Falls down. Looked like he gave himself up and then took contact, Kirk. As he uh, picked up about six or seven. Here again, it was a good read by him. He had he had Greenfield in front of him. So they'll say he gave himself up at the 16 and mark it back at the 16, but they allowed the contact to occur. Be second down, about four, but time's going to expire on quarter number one. So 15 minutes are in the books here at Prairie Flower Casino Field at Ralston Arena in the Omaha Beef. Trading scores with Oklahoma Flying Aces. A 
And this extra point is the difference as Omaha has a 14-13 advantage to the first quarter of play. Initial thoughts of the first quarter, Kirk. Well, obviously the beef, they were doing to the running the ball, doing it if they wanted to. And I, I would guess at least five, six yards per carry average. Uh, if you look at the Flying Aces, they were just looking for that short pass and hoping for the yards after catch. Uh, so, you know, here again, we talked about you running the football. Difference from a week ago, obviously talent level is different than the preseason game, but, and the, the short passes that you're talking about is a good job of neutralizing it, but we we haven't quite seen that pass rush that we were expecting so far. No, and it, but, you know, they're looking to, to get, with all the receivers, to get, get the ball out quick, and uh, they've done this so far. So we'll see. Though the coach will make some adjustments there. Uh, as far as some of the with, with the pass rush and so on. Stick around at halftime coming up. Got a couple of uh, interviews for you. We're going to talk with the coach of the Oklahoma Flying Aces, Richard Davis. Catch up with him on the offseason, building the franchise, the brand new franchise down in Eden, Oklahoma. It's a small community, nice arena. Omaha will take on the Flying Aces three times this season. Another time here at Ralston Arena, they'll make the trip down to Enid a little bit later this season. So they'll get to know them pretty well. But it, it, it's an arena. You haven't been there. We had the league meetings down there back in January. Brand new. It's uh, downtown. A lot of revitalization down there. Old warehouse buildings. But it's one of the uh, type of arenas. It's very cozy, if you will. Only about eight to ten rows of seats in any place, but uh, as typical of the small arenas, we're going to see low ceilings, which will affect the kicking game. be interesting to hear what Coach Davis says, too. Maybe he would probably wait until halftime so he wouldn't give away any secrets. That's, that's yeah, that's what we, that's what we did. <laughs> so, uh, we'll also talk with Craig Tyree, who is a big part of this league and he finds himself on the ownership group of both Oklahoma Flying Aces and co-owner of the Omaha Beef with Ricky Burtz and uh, got a chance to catch up with him. He's up in town for obvious reasons as Oklahoma kicks off their franchise and it's good to catch up with Craig. We'll talk with him at halftime. Well, I had a chance to talk with him pregame and stuff and he was very, very impressed with, with this, with Omaha, with the arena, everything concerned. And uh, he's, he's just very excited about, about well, both teams and, and the progress of the league. Ready to kick off the second quarter of play where we left off. Second down and four for Omaha driving at the Flying Aces 16-yard line. Sweeta goes back under center. They fake the jet sweep. The handoff oh, is to face Bray. Mask. It looked like an obvious face mask. And then they drive him into the boards. And uh, we're going to have a little extra. As they were pretty aggressive on that play officials break it up and antonio bray definitely on the receiving end of a face mask there and this will be 15 yards. Well, it'll be half the distance from that position against oklahoma well that one was as hard to see was it jerked his head sideways no he didn't have to sell that one too hard as they'll talk about it and mark it off So Anthony Washington on the infraction. 5 foot 11, 245 pound linebacker out of Southern Arkansas. Got a handful of face masks. Richard Davis arguing, not sure what he did not like. I'd assume not the face mask. That seemed pretty apparent. But there was some activity afterwards well, on he, both sides. Yeah, he chased him back down the field and tried to get a few more in. So they mark it off. It's first down and goal to go from the eight-yard line for Omaha, looking to score their third touchdown of the game. They'll hand it off to Bray. He has room on the right side. He lunges for the goal line, and they give it to him. It's a touchdown, Omaha. Third touchdown on three drives for Omaha. And the Omaha offense has been impressive so far as they drive down the field once again. And find themselves up by seven, 20 to 13. Yes, Seth, you know, is, is part of it is very, very impressive. I mean, because he is a threat as a runner, but his, his ball handling back there and everything, the blocking's been great. Uh, excellent running game. So Antonio Bray, a touchdown from eight yards out. Extra point pending. The kick is up, and it is good. 
14.39 remaining here in the second quarter. Omaha back up in front by eight. Another thing you did see in the kicking game, as far as good, both all three extra points, the snap was right on the money. And you talk about, again, you know, if you, if you miss those extra points, they, they catch up to you quick. Right now, keeping it an eight-point game, definitely an advantage for Omaha. will force uh, Oklahoma to make some decisions as this game goes on if they keep trading off touchdowns throughout the night. Richard Davis having another conversation with the officiating crew. And uh, I don't know, I, from back when you used to coach, Kirk, uh, you, I'm sure you probably side with Coach Davis when it comes to conversations with officials. I used to be pretty good at that. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Davis, uh, as we said, we'll talk with him at halftime. It, the relationship and, and some of his ownership and whatnot, uh, this, this league, the CIF league, the teams kind of help each other out. Obviously, it's good for the league to have a successful team down in, in Enid. And, uh, you know, we talked with them quite a bit during the offseason, just operational standpoints, trying to help them get going and whatever they need. And we share ideas, bounce them off each other, till game day at least. Uh, but uh, it's, it's a franchise we've spent a lot of time with. And uh, Richard Davis, though, game day, he's a competitor. Zeke puts the ball far to his right, and he's going to kick across field. Keeps it in bounds. Nice kick just inside the board, and Oklahoma finds some room on the near side. Only has a kicker to beat, and the kicker almost made him stop. But it's going to go coast to coast, and the flying aces on special teams respond with a touchdown. Yeah. So, you know, we, we talked about there's a lot of teams that aren't doing those long kicks anymore. They're trying to do the squibs because, you know, they don't want to get burned by the big return. They find it easier to try to challenge them to pick up the bounding ball. But this was just a nicely set up return. And he had went nobody chasing him other than the kicker to get in his way. Right to left, and they, they tried to pin him to the side. Here again, on special teams covering the kick, you have to stay in your lanes. And now... Oklahoma will try right here to make their move and go for the two-point conversion with the momentum and see if they can tie this ball game up. Flag on the field. And there's a flag. They took too long. That'll back them up five yards, and we'll see if that moves them back to uh, attempt the kick, and they will send the kicking crew out. So... Oklahoma was ready to try to tie that up. They had the momentum on the 54-yard kickoff return touchdown. But a delay of game backs them up, and now they'll try a long extra point. They pull within one. Mathis walks it off. Placement no. bobbled once again. And pressure in the go. backfield, and no good on the return as they're unable to get the handle on it and make anything out of the bad snap. Marcus Odom, the holder, gets tackled, and the try is unsuccessful. Well, you know, that's really to their detriment, this being their first game, where last week we had a little bit of an exhibition game and so on and so forth, so special teams are very, very important. You've seen two bad snaps, which resulted in, in uh, no points for them, so... Uh, so two conversions, as you mentioned, are the difference right now. Failed conversions for Oklahoma. 21-19, 14-24. Seeing touchdowns by both teams here in the opening minute of the second quarter of play. And a lot of offense so far. It's going to be a matter of we're going to kind of surprised to see them trading off back and forth, but it's going to be a matter of which defense can come up with that first stop of the game. Well, too, I mean, it's with a quick, quick return. I mean, instead of the defense, we we're running the ball at the people that we'll have to see. I mean, you, you can keep pounding on that defense, and you can wear them down, and that's, that's what's happening. So it's a quick turnaround for their defense to come back on the field. Javon Bell, number four, will line up deep for the return. Calvin, or correction, uh, Chris Perry. We'll line up at the five-yard line. 
Mathis tees it up, upright this time. He's kept all the previous kickoffs on the ground. This time, it's kind of a line drive in the air, fielded by Bell midway into the end zone, out to the 5, the 10, the 15. He bounces off a couple and into the wall. And Omaha will have first down as Kwame Bell was driven over the wall by the kicker. By the kicker into the Oklahoma bench, and a flag comes out. I think it's going to be a late hit or an unnecessary roughness, and it's going to add 15 yards to that play, Kirk. 15 gives us 15. So decent coverage by the kicking team for the Flying Aces. Actually, this is going to go against Omaha. Not sure how Bell gets that call as he was driven over the wall. But it ends up being half the distance against the Beef. And they'll start at their own eight yard line. Two point lead, 14 14 remaining here in the first half of play. Sweeta has been staying under center in the last two drives. We see a jump, no whistles. The handoff is in the backfield, oh. spins around, and for a loss is Calvin Phillips. They tried the quick pitch to the right side, couldn't find any room. And a loss of a couple of yards on the play will bring up second down and 12. Almost a little bit of an option look. Triple option type coming down on, coming down the line. There was nobody. Uh, he was well covered and pitched the ball. But So Oklahoma playing their first game in franchise history. We're starting to see them get some confidence and a little bit of momentum after that kickoff return for a touchdown. And now a couple of plays on defense. As Sweden drops back in the end zone, he has pressure, he can't get rid of it, the ball is loose, and it's going to be a game-tying safety for the Flying Aces, and we're going to be knotted up at 21. Came on a blitz, middle linebacker blitz right up the center. So momentum is shifted to Oklahoma as Omaha opened up the quarter with a touchdown, but then... A kickoff return for a touchdown from the Flying Aces, followed by uh, a short return with a personal foul backing Omaha up to their own seven-yard line. They had two big defensive plays ending up as safety, and they've made up for those missed extra points. We're tied up at 21. You can see, you can see that middle linebacker coming from a mile away. I mean, he was he was down ready before the play started. Started that to pick that up because it, lo it looked like he was ready to go. That's one of those uh, things that maybe having the rookie quarterback, you, you, it's that clock that they've been preaching to the quarterbacks. Everything's a little bit faster in that indoor game. you got to make a decision. You don't have a lot of time. Only three offensive linemen. When they send that blitz in there and get that pressure, you got to get rid of that ball. Yeah, because he just came just ran him right over. So Coach is having a little bit of a chat with player is going to have to calm them down a little bit as the Flying Aces have come in and trading blows blow for blow with Omaha and knotted up at 21 on game time safety as they've tackled Seth Sweet in the end zone and now we'll get the ball back as well regulation kickoffs after safeties in the CIF from the goal line. There's no punting in indoor football if you're not familiar with the game. And uh, so no free kick on the safeties. They, they kick it off like a regular score from their own end zone. Last time, Zeke. In a cross field, high kick, a traditional look like a good kick, but about a yard or two from the backboard, which is normally a good kick. But coverage failed, and they returned to 54 yards for a touchdown. We'll see what Omaha likes to do on special teams this time. And he's going to try the same kick. Nice high end over end kick. Puts it about a yard off the boards. Here we go again. Out of the end zone, across the 10 to 15, up the other side, driven into the wall. A good return. Once again by Andre Taylor Jr. And the Flying Aces are going to have great field position out near midfield. Oh, they took him farther back here. Uh, 
So they got a little piece of that wall. And they mark him out at the 18-yard line. Be first down for Oklahoma. 13.07 remaining. First half of play. 21 apiece. Josh Floyd and the Flying Aces haven't been stopped so far on offense. Looking to try to take the lead for the first time tonight. Floyd will operate out of the gun. Again, no running backs. No running back. Four receiver formation. He wants to throw. Fakes the pump, and he's on the run. Out to the 20, out near midfield. Let's see where they mark him out of bounds at. Could be at the 24-yard line. Pick up about five yards on the play. Be second down and five. Quick up tempo once again. Floyd takes the snap, throws again. Low, it looked like a bounce, and it was incomplete. Intended receiver was Josh Stewart out of Oklahoma State. Stewart spent a little bit of time in Tennessee Titans training camp of the NFL. Couldn't pick up the short hop. And a big third down for the beef defense. They have not stopped the flying aces yet tonight, looking for their first stop of the game. Crowd getting into it. Oklahoma taking their time on this play. Want to make sure they get the right call in and see if they can convert on third down. Again, no backs. Floyd wants to throw. Here comes the pressure. He's got man downfield and just overthrows him. Incomplete. It'll be fourth down, but the play was there, Kirk. They switched up on that on their pass coverage before that. Before they were running the, the wide outs, the ends on the side deep, and then throwing below. They, the ends hooked up at five yards, and they ran the, the high motion men deep. Richard Davis wants to go for it on fourth down, and why not? Momentum on the Flying Aces' side. Omaha needs a big stop to try to get the ball back. Tied up here. 11 minutes to go in the first half. Floyd with trips on the left side. Had some motion on that far side, no flag, and now short pass. Taylor, complete to the 25. No. Short of the first down marker, and the beef will pull on down. Went back to the bread and butter that we've seen him do this game, the short pass to Taylor. With Nearly had that first down yardage, but couldn't get there. Nice stop by the Omaha defense to get the turnover on down. On the trips, it was a really a quick screen. The two, they had two blockers in front, threw it to the back guy who had hooked up short. Good coverage. So Omaha holds for the first time defensively tonight. We'll get the ball back at their own 23-yard line. Under 11 minutes to go here in the second quarter of play. And Sweda try to recover from that sack for a safety on the last drive. Here's a quick pitch. The ball's on the ground. It's loose, and Oklahoma has it. Tried to get it to Calvin Phillips. It went off his face mask, threw his hands to his face mask on the ground. Quite frankly, it looked like nobody knew the ball was on the ground. Oklahoma had a couple opportunities, finally came up with it. And Omaha turns it over. Well, by hitting him in the face mask, that ball bounced a long ways. Back over this way. So Oklahoma gets the first turnover of the game on a fumble by Omaha. And if you're wondering, Sweeta, the only quarterback on the roster for Omaha here tonight. Floyd, hands off, near side. No. And it's been in the backfield, and second effort gets two or three yards. Looked like Perry came in, tried for the strip. Get the ball out, but end result, four or five yards for Josh Stewart. Josh Stewart, 5'10", 185 pounds, former Oklahoma State Cowboy, actually... One of the first signings for Richard Davis on this Flying Aces team. Turned a run of, uh, looked like no gain, into a gain of three or four at second down. And we have a flag on the play. Richard Davis just went over to the official and said something, then he pulled the flag out. Let's see what the call is. It's a sideline warning. 
Good call it. <laughs> whatever they said, whatever Richard Davis were ever talked to him about, they flagged him for a sideline warning. We're getting too close to the official there. He did not like that. So no yardage on the warning. And they'll repeat second down. Floyd's going to stay with that empty formation spread out. We saw them use that in the last drive. And that oh. one's batted out of midair. Nice job. Harold Wills gets his hands up there and knocks it out of play. It's third down and seven. So the Omaha defense led by assistant head coach, defensive coordinator Marvin Jones, getting challenged on the last two drives so far. They've shown up. Got another chance here on third down. Here again, same formation. Floyd in the gun awaits on the bull logo. He wants to keep it himself. Looked like a design run inside the 15 to 10. He has the first ball. down, and the ball's on the ground. Omaha has the ball. It appears we'll await the official ruling, and they give it to the beef. Oklahoma wants to say they're down. We'll see if there's a challenge on the play. But right now, Floyd, after the game, puts the ball on the carpet, and the beef have taken advantage. Take a look at the replay here. And I'm sure the coaches are watching this too. And that ball was out. It was out. That ball is loose. And Omaha will take over. So first turnover of the game for the beef. If you think we've been calling Richard Davis's name a lot tonight, well, there's a reason. We said he does everything, right, Kirk? You'll notice he is the on-field coach, both offensively and defensively, for Oklahoma. Sweet, oh. first down, nice completion to Farkerson, who was hit immediately and somehow hung on to that ball. Kane got whacked. That was a great stop. Antoine Hadley, uh, Nebraska Kearney, comes in. Had some playing time in the National Arena League a year ago, but made the immediate stop. But Kane, good for four or five yards. Did you say Nebraska Kearney? I did. Did that I, ring a bell? I didn't know that. That's surprising. But you knew everybody in Kearney. Second down and five. Seth under center. Kane in motion. They try oh. the quick screen. Bell. It was there, too. It was there. It was being led by Farkerson and just threw it over the head of Bell. And it'll be third down. Trying to set up that screen. Farkerson on the high motion was going to be the lead man and just missed Bell on the quick pass. You know, last week, of course, we saw we had, we had two quarterbacks, a lot of stuff going on. Maybe Seth is, is more comfortable under center. Well, for some reason, we've seen quite a bit of it here in the last two or three series. And just as you say that, he goes to the gun on third down and seven. Men in motion once again. He's going to drop back. Here comes the pass rush. He has to get rid of it. He does. He has a man downfield. It's Bell. It's incomplete. Good coverage by Oklahoma. It's Antoine Hadley again. Got a fingertip on it and tipped it out of reach of Bell. And it'll be fourth down. And I think Omaha will send out the kicking crew. They do. So Zeke will come out. It'll be a long place kick, about 49 yards to the goalpost. Remember, in indoor, there is no punting, so this is a field position play as well. But it'll be our first time to see the long field goal from Zeke, and we'll see what kind of leg he has. The attempt from 49 out. The placement's down. Low line drive kick. Almost gets to the boards. It'll be short and returnable. Out to the five. Good coverage. First man misses. Still running. And still running. Out near the 10-yard line. And Oklahoma will start at their own nine. So it looked like Zeke was trying to get it to the goalpost, but has about a 45-yard range. Did did drive that ball, kept it low. And that's another thing you're going to see sometimes on special teams. I have to take closer attention to that too, because 
if you've got offensive line up there blocking on the kicking team, they aren't used to covering kicks. And not a lot of things can happen on a, on a field goal return. If you caught the Don Igo coaches show during the week on the Omaha Beef Football Network, uh, we talked with James Kerwin about special teams and how difficult it is during the preseason because you have the 35-man roster, but you don't know which 25 guys are necessarily going to be on your roster. So putting together those special team squads is sometimes a little difficult to do and finding those guys that are actually going to make the team. It's the first time a lot of them have played together in these situations. Yeah, and lots of times you're going to see they don't really know well, how good, what this kicker's range is. You know, try it. something like that. Lots of times they're just going to say, hey, kick that thing out of bounds. Just kick it out of bounds and we can go from there. So that's the option there, right, is to try to put it out over the wall. Yes. On the sides. He's kicking it straight, so it looked like, I mean, you would assume he thought he had enough leg to get it. Yeah. In scoring position. Did not there in Oklahoma. Almost took advantage of a couple missed tackles, but gets it out to the nine. And when we come out of the media timeout, we'll have six minutes and six seconds remaining here in the first half. After watching both teams score our touchdowns on their first three drives, we've started to see the defenses now in the last couple of series step up for both teams, and we're tied up at 21. Again, stay with us at halftime. Interviews with Oklahoma head coach Richard Davis and uh, Oklahoma and Omaha co-owner Richard Ty or uh, excuse me, Craig Tyree along with other fe halftime festivities here at Ralston Arena. S uh, first down, flying aces, men in motion. Floyd keeps it himself. Tries to cut back to the line of scrimmage, dives forward for a gain of one. He's second down to nine. So Joshua Floyd coming off of some offseason leg injuries and surgeries you know that was actually you know a lot of teams as we mentioned he's been around i know considered floyd but that was kind of one of the concerns was how that leg would be but so far it looks uh, looks pretty good kirk yeah, floyd drops back here's well. the pressure look like a hold Double as Kwame was getting to him he throws it downfield incomplete Kwame bell came around that left side and was putting some pressure on him. I thought there's a handful of jersey that slowed him down, but either way. Well, we also had good coverage downfield. There were two men with him. Floyd got the pass. He tried for the home run. It's incomplete. It's third and nine. Obvious passing situation now for the Flying Aces. At their own 10 yard line, under five minutes to go. Tied up here in the first half of play. Four receivers set, two in motion. Floyd drops back. He deep, goes deep, downfield deep. again, throws into double coverage and makes the adjustment and the completion. It's going to be a touchdown for Oklahoma. Nice job by the receiver, Gerald Jones. He was double covered. The ball was even a little underthrown. He turned around, found it, and brought it in. Well, that was your typical what, the back, shoulder, back shoulder throw, but it was a little bit low. But, yeah, we had a man over top and a man short. And he caught the ball falling down. One of the talented players for the Flying Ace is the 5'10", 190-pound receiver out of the University of Tennessee. Did spend a little bit of time in NFL training camp with the Philadelphia Eagles, and he showed some skills there as he found that ball, brought it in, and the Flying Aces have their first lead of franchise history. Point extra is up, and it is good. Flag. And we're going to have... Uh, a late hit on the kicker. Kwame Bell went in and took a shot at the kicker and got his leg. And Richard Davis is furious as this is going to be a roughing the kicker. And uh, as you know, only one kicker on these rosters. That's a big deal anytime a kicker gets hit. On the defense, number two. Bell took the shot and ran off the field, and Richard Davis is livid on the far side as he's, I'm sure, concerned that he may be without a kicker now. Yeah, and they're going We're going to find out right away as they're going to have to kick off. 
assess after the kick, right after the kick, what happens if there's a touchdown? You get touchdown plus 15 <laughs> yards. Yay. I think you get to decide if you want the penalty at that point. Yeah. So Mathis got the tee. He'll come back out, kick off, trying to shake that off. But Bell got a pretty good shot on him. Did not get any ball and uh, gets assessed with the personal foul. Now, I believe I'll have to go uh, check up during the between games, but I believe that's a penalty that the kicking team could take before as well, Kirk, which would give you the option of kicking off from the 15-yard line, and if you want to try onside kick or something like that, I'll find out by next week. I believe that's an option. I may be wrong. Oklahoma out in front, 28-21. Mathis, we'll see how hurt he is. He puts a, whoa, low bouncer picked up at the 20. Peterson into Oklahoma flying aces territory. That's the second time we've seen him pick up the short kick. And Omaha now trailing. We'll start in flying aces territory. So, Kirk, uh, Omaha looking a little shell-shocked as the Flying Aces are coming in here and came here to play tonight. Yeah, they did. Of course, they're, they're seeing, seeing an offense that they haven't seen before. Obviously, after last week, there was no offense. You see. So now we have the penalty mark off. So we're back to the 13th. So another 15-yard line, or another 15-yard penalty on the end of the run. And the Beast start at their own 13 after the personal foul on the late hit on the kicker. 4.27 remaining. The Beef are trailing. 28-21 opening week of CIF play. Sweet on first down. He's going to operate out of the shotgun. The Beef show their own four receiver set. Two in motion. Here comes the pass rush. It's complete to the near side. That's Bray. Tries to make a move. Picks up four yards before he's tackled. He's second down and six. Twenty-eight, twenty-one, Oklahoma. Sweeta back under center. Bray in the backfield. Bell in motion. He takes it on the sweep. The 15, the 20, out near midfield. Good for first down yardage. Seven yards for Antonio Bray on that sweep. Spotted in midfield, another first down for Omaha. Bell, six foot receiver out of Texas Tech. Played for Marvin Jones at Cedar Rapids a year ago. He's in motion here on first down. They'll keep it on the ground to Bray. Right up the middle, oh, another face, face mask. No flag on the play. As there's a pickup of seven, there's a flag back in line of scrimmage. They're going to call a hold on Omaha. And apparently did not see the handful of face mask. Skyler Prohl on the holding infraction, but the face mask looked apparent. Well, that's one of those. We'll take a look at this once again. See Bray cut back, and there goes the face. <laughs> no call on the play. That's the one I used to tell officials, shake your head, your eyes are stuck. So back it up 10 yards. It'll be first down and 20 for Omaha as they try to respond to the Oklahoma touchdown. Sweeta puts the men in motion, drops back, three-step drop, complete to the near side to Jones. Good for four yards. Be second down at 16. So Oklahoma, Oklahoma is gonna be willing to give up short pass on that situation. The second down and 16, two and a half to go here in the first half. So 
Sweet under center. Quick screen pass over to Jones on the left side. Out near midfield. He's stacked up. It's going to be third and ten. Kirk, you can just see that defensive line really pinning those ears back on each play, bringing that pressure right at the snap. Yeah, they know what's, they know what's coming. I mean, they, you aren't going to do too much out of the pistol. Third down and 10 for Omaha ball at midfield. Clock will stop at one minute for the one minute warning in the CIF. Sweeta puts the men in motion and oh. looks for Jones across the middle, but he's met immediately and the ball falls incomplete. Nice job of coverage from the Marcus Odom playing that linebacker position and brings up fourth down. And Omaha is going to send out the kicking team. They can let this clock go down to the one minute warning if they want to. About four second differential on the play clock. As Zeke comes in, this is going to be about a 42 yard field goal and the clock's going to stop at the one minute warning first. I don't think Omaha knew that the clock was going to stop as the players were looking for the flag and the officials tell them we've hit the one minute warning. So when we come back, it's going to be about 39 yard attempt, Kirk, for Omaha. It looked like on his previous kick, he had about 40 yards of distance when he tried it from about 47 yards out. So it'd be, it could be close. We'll, well see if he's if he's going for the score, if they're going for the field position. The other thing too, with with this with these narrow goal posts, you're almost going to have to kick. It's almost line drive kicking. You're, you can keep it in the middle because you aren't going to you aren't going to hook it in. Just joining us, 28-21, Oklahoma, flying aces. Had a pretty good start to their franchise here tonight. As they, they started out with um, some short passes, as you noted, Kurt. Josh Floyd, though, has opened up the running game, both uh, from the quarterback position and a couple other uh, handoffs and then it opened up the deep ball which he took advantage of later in the half they were doing some things too with with the, with the high motion and then in the dwight outs you know with four receivers going downfield before the the the, the uh, high motion man was running people off and they were throwing short they switched it up and a high motion man was, was running deep and then he ran he just ran past them but it was a heck of a throw and a heck of a catch really for the touchdown two extra points unsuccessful for Oklahoma in the first half but a safety in the second quarter which actually tied up the game at the time at 21 really saw a momentum switch during that whole time we saw safety we saw a kickoff return for a touchdown for Oklahoma and ever since then uh, they let them in the game and they're here now to play we come out of the one minute warning it'll be fourth down for Omaha and about a 39-yard field goal attempt is what they appear to be ready to attempt. And the situation, too, now is, is they they deferred to the second half as far as the kick. So here again, they're going to get the possession. Depending on what's happening here, they'll have two possessions back-to-back. -back. So Zeke actually stayed on the field during that whole time out. He's ready to try this kick and see if he can get three points for Omaha. 28-21 Oklahoma as we head towards the end of the first half of play. Thank you for joining us this week on Pluto TV, the home for CIF football all season long. We'll be coming from you. Home games here from Prairie Flower Casino Field at Ralston Arena. Week number one tonight. Here's the field goal attempt for Omaha. Clean snap, low line drive kick. It is up and good. 
And a little extra leg on that one, so he's good from 39 out. And we have a four-point ball game, 28-24. Nice kick. Nice kick. It was, it was a line drive, just, just right inside the right upright. Good for three. So as you mentioned, Oklahoma will get the ball first to start the second half of play. But 55 seconds, plenty of time to drive it down the field. Actually, plenty of time for even a couple scores. We've seen that before, oh. too, in indoor. Never out of time when it comes to moving the ball down the field. And it's going to start with the kickoff coverage, which Oklahoma has had a pretty good job, pretty good success on the return so far here in the first half. Yes. As we mentioned, the Omaha Beef will be off next week. And back in action for their second regular season game will be up at Sioux City at the Tyson Event Center two weeks from tonight. Hope you can make the trip up I-29. Hope you physically can make the trip I-29. I, I guess there's some issues right now going that way. Normally a pretty quick trip up there. We'll see what it looks like in two weeks. Hopefully things start to clean up for all the people that are dealing with those flooding issues in the area. Nebraska Strong Week here at the arena tonight. Donations for flood victims. As Omaha Beef have been partnering with local officials and uh, gathering donations for that cause. Here's the squib kick and it bounces fielded at the 5 out to the 15 where he's stacked up. About 11 yards on the return for Taylor. And that's the first time we've seen Omaha keep it on the ground and that looked a little bit more successful as we said. That's kind of the trend of this league, Kirk. Yeah. That's, but it was good coverage. He set a wall and then made the tackle. So that's been impressed with Andre Taylor Jr. on the return game out of Pitt State. Played with the Kansas City Phantoms a year ago in the CIF. The Phantoms now defunct, but he's doing a good job not only finding the spaces on the returns, but fielding that ball cleanly, especially on a bouncing kick like that. And uh, been a potent weapon for the Flying Aces here in the first half. They'll start their own 16-yard line. 51 seconds remaining. They have all of their timeouts. As we head towards halftime, Floyd, quick pass over to the far side. It's complete for about four yards. Clock will continue to run as it's second down and six. There again, quick screen. He had a, he had a blocker in front of him. Down near 30 seconds, used a lot of time on that play. Floyd resetting the offense. Clock continues to run, second down and seven. Oklahoma trying to add to a four-point lead. Here comes the pass middle. rush. Bell tries to get there. The pass is eventually completed, and a nice hit on the official, too. And they're going to stop the play to make sure that everybody's okay. As we have an official timeout with nine seconds remaining, and Oklahoma, I think, will use timeout number one as well. The headlinesman took a good whack. That was a good whack. <laughs> Watch this again. Oh Man. Down we go. Did a good job not hitting his head when you're going backwards like that. That's what you worry about. Yeah. Got right back up, so a good sign, but he might be feeling that one tomorrow. <laughs> Four yards on the completion. Oklahoma takes their first time out. Two remaining. Nine seconds to go. Here in the first half, Oklahoma trying to add to a four-point lead going into the locker room. Balls at their own 24-yard line. Flying aces to receive the second half kickoff. Floyd puts the men in motion. No running backs, short, and he's going to tuck it under. Clock's running down to five, we four, three, and we got a flag in the backfield. That's actually a towel. Towel, yeah. So. Wrong color. It'll be a first down spot at the 19-yard line. Three seconds to go, and Oklahoma uses timeout number two. So time for one more play up here, Kirk. Do you kick here, or are they going to go for it? Joshua Floyd staying on the field. It looks like they'll set up a play on offense, but they're going to have to get it down into the end zone as it 
you would assume there's only time for one more play. Yeah, the defense is going to, I think, are going to play in the deep. What you have to worry about is that short throw and run. making some noise as they try to support the defense just need to keep them out of the end zone as they'll go for it with three seconds remaining 19 yards from the end zone they have that spread wide receiver four wide receiver set men in motion Floyd right. fakes the handoff looks downfield has a man on the near side makes a move at the five reaches across the goal line and it's a touchdown as time expires in the first half of play. Great job by Oklahoma. The score as time expires here in the first half of play, and they have taken a 10-point lead with an extra point remaining here in the first half. Mathis looking for the bonus point. Low bobbling snap. They get it down. Mathis puts it up. And it is good. So first half is in the books. And who would have seen this one coming? The Flying Aces of Oklahoma out of Enid, Oklahoma. First game in franchise history. Are taking a 35-24 lead into the locker room against the Omaha Beef. Omaha and Oklahoma traded touchdowns on their first two possessions of the game back and forth. And actually, Omaha led most of the first quarter of play up 21-19, and then things started to turn. Oklahoma returns a kickoff for a touchdown. Gets a safety to tie it up at 21. And then took advantage of turnover. And good field position to kickoff returns. And takes a 35-24 lead into the locker room. Halftime here at Prairie Flower Field at Ralston Arena before tonight's contest had a chance to catch up with the uh, head coach and part owner of the Oklahoma Flying Aces, Richard Davis. We'll listen to that conversation here. You're listening to the Omaha Bee Football Network. Arena halftime. Omaha Beef and the Flying Aces with Flying Aces head coach before the game, Richard Davis, and friend of the program every day except maybe today, but uh, competitors today. But uh, you've been around the league a long time, and as we talked about in the pregame, you built a program, a franchise from scratch, and you've got part of the ownership as well as as well as well being head coach. Uh, I'm sure you're happy to actually come up today and actually play some football, but talk about just what the process was for the last six or seven months down in Enid. Well, you're right, uh, starting with the most obvious. I am glad it's game day. I'm glad I could focus on just on the, on the game itself and the, and the players and all that. Um, it's been hectic, Todd. I mean, you know, there's so much to do on bringing a franchise from the ground up. It, I don't even know how if there's a single formula that you could log in and say, okay, do this, do that. It doesn't work that way. So you've got – it's a constant challenge every day, like you and I were talking about off air. Some of the things that came perfectly easily for you guys were an incredible struggle for us. Our housing in our market is an example. We have um, a very heavy oil field re kind of a boom going on. Our the wind energy, if you will. Well, they've taken all the available housing in our market, and so that made it tough. So those are the types of things – 
you, you just can't say, well, I quit. You sure. gotta say, okay, what are my, my solutions? And so working around that um, has been a challenge, but fun. It's part of what drives me. It's part of what's the right. cool part of our business. Um, as you know, we talk to you guys Gosh, every day we all quite a bit. We share we share frustrations and stories, but but um, it's been it, you know it's been good. The community is embracing us. We still have a lot, I think, of awareness to go. I think we're there's still a lot in our community and region that aren't quite sure we're there yet, and so that's kind of a good thing, I think. You know, and so we're excited. And talk about your your community, Enid, Oklahoma. We thought it would be a good fit league wide, and obviously you did as well. Tell us a little bit about the community. It's a little smaller town. It is. But a nice arena, good facilities, and, and just how the the community's been uh, embracing the program so far well so yes it is a smaller community so in that sense we took a, took a bit of a risk um, we felt like this particular market it's it's really the gateway to the northwest and north central part of Oklahoma so we we gambled that we could reach into that if you will region um, sure. instead of just the town but yeah we are the Green Bay Packers of, of our league now we're the small market um, but it's a cool market. It's a beautiful building, uh, yes. as you saw. Yep. Um, it's going to be the configuration is going to make us one of the more unique buildings for people to play in. I think it's going to be crazy loud. And our, you know, it's Oklahoma. It's football. The people are going to love that. They're going to embrace it. And so, um, I think once we get our, our our name out there, once we get our first game kind of through that threshold, people, I think there's going to be a lot of viewers watching tonight, actually, sure. on on, on, on uh, Pluto. And so if that's the case, once we get going, I think we will, um, we, you know, we'll be fine. Talk about your facilities a little bit. We did have league meetings uh, there during the off season, so we got a chance yeah. to check them out. Some revitalization going on in the downtown Eden area. Beautiful older building that's been redone. Uh, the things that we noticed, you said some unique configurations. We're going to have some low ceilings. You know, it's going to be one of those. But when we have that, I mean, if I remember right, it's about eight or ten rows deep. The entire uh, arena is going to be a great seat wherever you're at. It. I think it is. We're going to seat about three thousand folks, and there won't be a bad seat in the house. It's just really you. You mentioned the, the historic renovation, and they brought in all the glass on the walls, and just so gorgeous and beautiful. Um, again, now we just got to go make the community believe in us and invest in us, and uh, that help that comes from us getting back into the community. You know, we got our Read to Win program going on. We got our, our players out there as much as we can. So. Um, we're just in the infancy stages, some good things, some bad things, and we just march on and, and build it day by day. We're obviously at halftime, but we're talking before the game. Just a, a little uh, little football part. You bring a, you're bringing a veteran quarterback in, yep. uh, Joshua Floyd. The fans around here, we ask about him because, yeah. you know, he's played here and obviously a few other places as well. But uh, what's it like and how important is it just to get that veteran piece in there? Uh, is, that, is that what you really had to build around when you're a brand-new team? Well, you know, so I've had some experience. We, we launched um, another market as most people might remember Bismarck we launched Bismarck and you know we went a different way we kind of have a rookie we brought a rookie quarterback to the to the stage the first year and I don't know that uh, that worked out so well sure um, I think and he, now Johnson did a great job he just happened to be a really talented guy but if in this situation I felt like if we could get the right veteran guy I did think it would be a positive, a calming influence. Now, Josh has got his own challenges. He's coming back off an injury yep. that he set out a year. Um, but do I think, if, if things go well, do I think Josh would be a huge positive? Absolutely, absolutely. Because we've got a bunch of rookies. We think we're talented, but we also know we don't know a lot about the game. You know, right. our, our guys are just figuring this deal out. So, I'm, you know, they walked out here for free game, and the first time they walked in the arena, went, okay, here we are. <laughs> here we are. So, Coach, we appreciate you spending time with us. We're going to see you a few times this year. It looks like you're yeah. back up here a little bit later this season. Of yeah. course, we'll be traveling down to Enid and hopefully bringing some uh, fans of Cowbells as well. So, Absolutely. appreciate the time. Thanks for having us, Todd. Appreciate Take it. Take care, Coach. That's that, Coach, of the Oklahoma Flying Aces. Before the game, Richard Davis and Kirk Iyer. Coach Davis was slow playing us a little bit, kind of playing it up. Oh, I don't know what I got here. You know, these guys, you know, they're kind of in awe when they came to the arena. I didn't see any of that so far in the first half of play. Yeah, yeah, there was no rookie mistake there. <laughs> <laughs> so, halftime here at Ralston Arena, Prairie Flower Casino Field. Halftime festivities, and Oklahoma, who would have seen this one coming, out in front 35-24. to 24. Uh, as we've talked about through the through the first half, uh, some common ownership between the two teams and new ownership for the Omaha Beef this season. 
Ricky Birch, you know about him, who uh, has been around this league as executive with Salina, Dodge City, and uh, previous leagues before that. But his partner, Craig Tyree, who's also a uh, partner in the Oklahoma Flying Aces. And quite frankly, you know, Craig has uh, been tremendous in supporting these two teams. But uh, it was probably critical for the CIF even existing this year since the team is down to eight uh, teams. Of the, excuse me, since the league is down to eight teams here this season as they try to rebuild and, and grow again. Oh, absolutely. You know, it, eight teams is, well, it's start. I don't know what in IFL, IFL doesn't have how many teams now? I think they're at 10 now. Oh, they're at 10, yeah, because they, they've been down. But, yeah. You see these teams go up and, or you see these leagues go up and down, and there's an obvious, why don't you merge? There's a lot of reasons that doesn't happen, obviously. But, uh, but it, it's a game every year trying to add and subtract teams. Yeah, yeah, it is. And new people, too. And, and, you know, but we've been here 20 years, though. <laughs> Knock on wood. It'll yeah. be 21, right? Yeah. No, I, I just think, you know, with, with Ricky and, and, and the stuff we've got here, I think we're good to go for another 20 as a hope. But, uh, you know, boy, they, they, the killer here was obviously that, 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 that last touchdown. Now they deferred to the second half. They're going to get the ball again. We'll talk about the first half and what the Beef need to do in the second half. But first, let's catch up with co-owner of the Omaha Beef and co-owner of the Oklahoma Flying Aces. This was our interview before the game with Craig Tyree. Back at Ralston Arena, halftime. Omaha Beef and the Oklahoma Flying Aces and a chance to talk to our good friend Craig Tyree is in a unique position, part ownership group of both the Omaha Beef and the Oklahoma Flying Aces. And we talked to Richard Davis a little bit, head coach of the Oklahoma Flying Aces a little bit earlier. And he's telling us a little bit, it's been a challenging few months trying to get everything off the ground and needed, but it sounds like you're, you're getting into a good place down there. Yes, we are. Uh, Richard, Judy, you're doing a great job. Uh, have all those normal startup things that you have to work through and uh, our season over is April 6th so and that's coming upon us pretty quick uh, still a lot to do but uh, I think we'll get there and uh, put on a good show talk about uh, how the community is reacting uh, Enid not a huge town and how that's uh, welcoming an indoor football so far for you guys Enid has welcomed us uh, tremendously believe it or not and uh, as far as a small town is concerned the community is around us too we've had a lot of uh, support from the surrounding communities and uh Enid has been over backwards to help us and uh lend to everything that we're doing and uh, we really appreciate the partnership with them we were talking with coach davis a little bit earlier and and really i think it's going to be one of the uh Anything outside, we really like to do. We play a lot of cornhole. Caden is pretty good at it. He's kind of like a master in a bunch of things. He has no quit in him. He's intelligent. He's caring to his sisters and his mother and his friends. He's a pretty good little role model, really. Caden is limited. He cannot do any contact sports due to his pacemaker. Caden has to take breaks. It's a part of his life, and it's a part of our life. We had taken Caden in for a physical when he was five months old, and she instantly said, I'm calling Children's. There is something wrong with Caden's heart, and he needs to be transported over there immediately. That's when Kate had his first echocardiogram and EKG, and they told us that Kate had transposition of the great arteries. And transposition of the great arteries is when your arteries are switched in your heart. I was devastated. I wondered if I would be strong enough to take care of him and all that it entailed. You can't imagine watching a child go through this.
His heart is so special. He was one of the first ones at children to have the 3D heart made. Prior to them going into Caden's heart again, they can go through and see what will work on Cade. It's amazing. He's a warrior. He doesn't really get nervous. He's got a resilience and a toughness to him that I just admire. He's very in tune to his body for being seven years old, and that's something that I try and teach him. Caden's was born at a really neat time where advances in medicine just seemed to go by leaps and bounds. And whereas the prognosis may have not been so great 25 years ago, I'm, I'm very optimistic that these people that I've met at Children's and the people behind the scenes that I'll never meet, they just keep pulling off miracles and getting better and better and better. And if I could say anything to those people, it's just thank you, thank you, thank you. He's more than just a little boy. He's a heart hero. He's a brother. He's a son, a grandson. I'm going to come back. And he's a very, very, very smart little kid. If you donate, it doesn't just help the kids. It helps the whole hospital. Children's saved Kate's life. The teamwork that they have there is amazing. Every specialist, they all are one team and they work towards getting Caden the care he needs. I love those people. Thank you for um, saving my life, and I will never forget you guys. Charlie Davidson, where old school meets new school. Come meet the new guys today. Six News First Alert Weather, always alerting you. When it's time to take action, we issue a first alert day. Pinpointing when the storm will hit, what it will bring, and who will be affected. With one goal, to keep you and your family safe. Six News First Alert Weather is on your side. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Beardmore Subaru's first annual Best in Show. This Beardmore Subaru does impress me much. Just look at that sleek body. Uh-huh. And this Crosstrek has some spunk, that's for sure. Woo! After that show, there's only one place left to go. The dog park.
Oklahoma Beef and Oklahoma Flying Aces. We are ready for the second half of play. It is 35-24. The Beef have their work cut out for them, have dug themselves a little bit of a hole here in the first regular season game. Kirk, we were talking about it during halftime, and uh, it's really a matter of execution at this point. And uh, defense has not stopped the Flying Aces. That's probably the biggest surprise so far. Yeah, it is. And I, here again, uh, you know, coaches know that you have to make your biggest adjustments at halftime. So we're going to see what's going to happen. Uh, um, they kind of fell in as far as uh, the Aces offenses. Uh, offense fell into a, 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 a pattern that was working for them. They kind of switched things up and, 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 and uh, had very, very good success. We appreciate the fans joining us on Pluto TV, uh, including Michael Lewis out in New Jersey watching on the Omaha Beef Football Network. Appreciate your support and everybody watching us. We'll be with you all season long on the Pluto. And half number two, the Beef are going to need a stop. Jump. As job number one, a bouncy kick this time. Finally, Taylor Sobralos picking it up and a swarming coverage gets him inside the five yard line. A good start for the Beef on kickoff coverage. Well, that's what Omaha needed to do is put the long field in front of the Flying Aces, and it's a good start here in the second half, Kirk. Yeah, that was a good kick and good bounce for us. And uh, let's see. Come on, defense. Let's do something. So they spot the ball at the five-yard line. And Joshua Floyd, the ex-Omaha Beef, ex-Dodge City, ex salina quarterback, We'll come back out on the field, and he has, as we mentioned, he, he's a he's a dual threat and has had enough of that ground threat to open up that passing game, and it seems to be building throughout the night. He drops back, he'll throw on first down. It's a dump off at the five-yard line, good for five, or nearly five yards, as is completed to Josh Stewart out of Oklahoma State. Second down, six. That's the other thing. We've seen some yards after the first contact, too, tonight, Kirk, and uh, Oklahoma's done a good job of keeping these plays alive. Well, they start out pretty much the same thing, all this with a run that was stop back. He just ran a stop. Two wides on each That's side. Right. Here comes a pass rush. Bell gets pressure on him. He's going deep, and it's intercepted. Intercepted by Omaha, and here's the return after the 5, the 10, the 15's got some room. Here we go, here we go, here we go. A big return inside the 10, the 5, looking for the end zone, but there is a flag at the 2-yard line, and we'll see what the penalty was, but a big interception by Omaha with the big return, and we'll see if this stands. So the penalty is going to be a hit on the quarterback. They said he hit him in the head and it's going to negate the interception and return and give. Oklahoma another 15 yards. Ray Dudley Giles on the interceptions wiped out. And the result of the play is a first down for the Flying Aces out near midfield. Quick pass again to the left side. It's complete into beef territory inside the 20, down the 19. Pick up about seven on first down, makes it second down and three. Same play they ran two plays ago. It's been pretty basic, Kirk. It's just those short hitches and hooks, and uh, then it's yards after completion. Second down and three. Flying Aces on the move once again. Opening drive of half number two. Floyd takes it, wants to throw, has a man wide open. Touchdown. Wide open, Josh Stewart, and how does he get wide open 
Receiver out of Oklahoma State's been hurting the beef all night long, and the flying aces are taking a commanding seven-point lead with the extra point to come. Well, that's about the last thing Omaha needed to start the half, Kirk. Well, yeah, that was and that pretty much the same play that they they had on the first down possession. And ran, but he ran it. He ran it to the other side. Just ran right up, right, right up the sideline, wide open. Nobody even close. Mathis for the point after, and this one yes. is up in the air. Looked like it may have been partially blocked, and it's no good. And the third time tonight, the conversion fails for Oklahoma um, but regardless it's a 17 point advantage early here in the second half against Omaha a terrible terrible momentum change we had the interception to stop and the, the ball down inside the five yard line and it turned and it turned two plates turned into a touchdown uh, it's how quick things can change in this sport and Omaha now is going to have really no room for error Kirk and been well documented here in the first half plus had a heck of a time stopping Oklahoma on offense they're, that's the first thing they got to do is, is figure out how to stop them but they're gonna have to keep up with the scores now as well in the last two possessions Omaha has not been able to do that no I you know last three three possessions for them scores you know and it's uh, yeah that's so 41 to 24, 12:49 remaining here in the third quarter. Oklahoma Flying Ace is actually in control at the moment as they are playing their first game in franchise history. Mathis will set the ball down sideways like we saw him in the opening kickoff. So he's kept most of the kicks on the ground. This is pretty obvious he intends to do the same. It's a roller picked up by, well, nope, it's good bounce. It's finally picked up by Bray, or correction, that's Javon Bell, out to the 21-yard line. Decent field position once again for Omaha, but it's going to be a need to score on almost every possession type of game until that defense right. can come up with a couple stops. Stops. Yeah. Chuck Wright some help at the U.S. Cellular call of the game. Fans on the field helping with the play calling. Sends the play in on first down. Sweeta starting his first professional game here tonight. And here's the handoff. The handoff back up the middle. Phillips drops his shoulder and crosses midfield. Six yards for Phillips. Be second down and four is the beefer in Oklahoma territory. That play's been successful all evening, really. Fake to the left to bring it back to the right. Omaha has seen success between the tackles when they have gone there. We'll see if they continue that attack. For Hoskin in motion, they hand off to Phillips. Phillips good for another yard. It's gonna be third down and long. That was pretty much the beginning of a run pass option. Faking there running to get the man in motion coming down. We'll see if you see that again. Omaha probably in four down territory from this point forward. Unless the game gets closer again for Hoska in motion. Sweda keeps it, finds the first down, almost gave himself up a little too quickly but just gets the first down and they'll move the chains it's bottom at the 17 a fresh set of downs for Chuck Wright's offense Omaha looks to cut into that 17 point deficit well a good play to keep the chains moving Omaha was successful in their first few drives of putting together nice long drives but then Things started falling apart, including that game tying safety in the second quarter. Men in motion, Sweeta drops back, 
Quick drop and a throw. It's nearly caught. caught. It is caught. Touchdown. Kareem man. Jones popped Beautiful it up kick. in the air and then came down with the ball. Good for the touchdown. His first as a professional. And the beef are trying to stay back in this game, respond with a touchdown here in their opening drive of the second half. Beef back within 11, extra point to come. And they scored quickly, so that's good. Zeke out for the extra point. Up and Ooh. good, and he's been automatic on point afters tonight. So it's a 10-point game with 10-26 remaining in the third quarter. As we said, Omaha's going to have to keep scoring on offense, but now going to have to figure out a way to, to stop them on defense. Stop that defense. Joshua Floyd has returned to Omaha, seeing success for Oklahoma. 41 points so far. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I didn't think Omaha would give up 41 to, to a lot of teams, quite frankly, with the way that the defense is set up. So a little bit surprising, but uh, Oklahoma's found some some areas to take advantage of that defense so far. Including, we saw them targeting those linebackers a couple times in the first half. Yeah, they did. But what they're doing, I mean, their, their emotions and everything are pretty much the same all the time. It's just, just who, they're, who they're looking to run deep and who they're looking to run underneath. And, uh, I mean, it's... It's sound because there, there hasn't been any pass rush at all, really. And the one they did on our interception, we had inter we uh, had the penalty. So Oklahoma offensive line is actually probably one of their strengths, and you know, I mean, it, it always gets overlooked. But that's the core of your your offense. But it's got some big guys up front, including Terry Ewell Jr. and Rufus Quinn of Arkansas Tech. Six foot five, 320 pounds, played in the PIFL last season with Trenton and Ewell with out of Abilene Christian. CIF experience with Salina, six foot two, 325 pounds, and uh, has given Floyd all the time he's needed to, to run that offense so far tonight. Omaha has really not gone to Floyd unless he started running. No. And uh, as a defensive lineman, they, 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 and a 300-pounder gets his hands on you, it's, <laughs> you got to bench press him out of there, and that's a that's a tough tough way to go. Andre Taylor Jr. out of Pitt State, back deep, weighing the kick. He's had a very good night bounce, on returns, bounce. and this time he mishandles it, picks it up at the eight-yard line, cuts back to the ten, and he is hit hard. Boy, that was a high hit. I'm almost surprised the flag did not come out on that one as Chris Perry got the shoulder pad into the face mask on the return and stopped him at the 14-yard line. We've seen a couple personal fouls called in this game for hits to the helmet area. And Omaha probably fortunate not to get one there. Going to try to get some defensive momentum and get a stop here. Ten-point game approaching the ten-minute mark of quarter number three. This has been the base formation for the Flying Aces here in this game. Empty backfield, four receiver set. Floyd complete out to the 14-yard line. Good for about a yard. And it's going to be second down and a long eight. Same plays over and over, Kurt. Over and over. Yeah. You run them until they don't work. That's right. And then you switch it up just a little bit. But I mean, it's the same. It's just window dressing. Same thing, you know, same formation all the time. And uh, just run and switch. Men in motion. Now, Floyd right wants to throw. Right. Finally, a pass rush. And he's going to come out of the pocket, tries to force it. A little underhand shovel pass is going to be incomplete. And a flag late away from the ball. Head official throws the flag. I didn't see any activity there. What did Vernon see?
Well, we hope this final Jeopardy uh, answers it for the beef. Oh, they're going to say that Floyd was across the, the line of scrimmage, scrimmage when he threw that. The penalty is going to send him backwards. Five-yard penalty. But no loss of down. I thought it was a loss of down. I, did, I thought so, too. They said third down. No. We got, no, it shows third, and he showed third. We got third on the stick, second on the scoreboard, and he said second down, didn't he? He said second down, but he gave the signal over here to the to the box uh, third. So it appears to be third down and 13 based on the chains and what we believe the officials communicated, but we'll find out. Here's the pass. It's completed out to the 23-yard line. Whatever it is, it's going to be about two yards to go. And I believe it's fourth down. It is Vernon Gibbs. The fourth down hand signal is to be fourth and about four. If I'm Oklahoma, I'm thinking about kicking this ball and playing a little field position, but he's going to leave the offense out there. They have not done that yet tonight. They're going to try to keep the pressure on the beef and convert this fourth down and three. Big play in the game. They're just looking for a hitch right here. Same formation, right men in motion. Floyd wants to throw it. Yes. It's knocked out of play. It's incomplete. Big stop by the Omaha defense and breaking that pass up for Omaha. Daniel Peterson. Was Daniel Peterson out of Idaho? Great job jumping in there, breaking up the pass route. And Omaha's going to get the ball back on downs. I don't think they saw me. I said point, and I said it's going to happen right here. They didn't see me. I don't think they were looking at you. <laughs> so finally, we talked about the defensive stop, and the beef have come up with one. We'll see if they can take advantage. It's a 10-point game. 41-31. 8.30 remaining here in the third quarter of play. Omaha trying to get back in control of this contest. Two wideouts on the right side, oh. one on the near side. The handoffs to Bray inside the 20, drops down, finds the 17-yard line. Well, that timing is very, very close. I mean, it would almost hit the wrong guy on the snap. Gain of four on the play, second down and six. Omaha trying to make it a one-possession contest. Trailed by as many as 17. Bray in the backfield with Sweeta out of the gun. Drops oh. it and picked off. Thrown right to the linebacker. Traylon Weber out of Oklahoma State. Right to him. That was an easy pickoff. Easy. I didn't even think there was a receiver in the area. Six foot five, hard to miss, right in the breadbasket as we take a look at it again. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure what he saw there, but he did not see Weber. And Oklahoma with a big stop, second turnover of the night for Omaha. And a big one here as Omaha was trying to make it a one possession contest. Right back on offense, defense, or uh, Floyd wants to throw deep and now he runs around this is what he does best buys extra time he throws downfield yes. nearly found the open receiver it's broken up on the play incomplete Desmond Reed came in tried to sell a interception but that was off the ground to be second down he did make a good break on the ball though we're starting to see uh -oh. the defenders make a little better and we got an injured player As the training staff's going to come, and I believe that's Peterson on the ground. Yes. Nope. No. Nope. I take it back. Way. There's Peterson over there. So that's Russell Denny who checked into the game. Had not been playing earlier. I believe checked in for Harold Wills. And we'll try to see... Uh, what happened he's, he's working his way back up may have just had the wind knocked out of him he's all right denny will 
get off the field on his own. And there's a discussion going on with the officials between Harold Wills and Marvin Jones is letting his players know that you don't talk to the officials like that because it's not going to end in a good way. And that's a good po coaching point that we've seen. Jones a couple times already in the early parts of the season talk to the players about that. You got to keep your composure in these situations. Yes. So back to action. Second down for Oklahoma. Second and 10 from their own 21. Quick pass once again. It's complete to Taylor. Cross midfield, and there's another seven yards for Oklahoma. It's be third and short. Just a quick slide route, and he had a man in front of him. It's basically one man screen. Taylor's been a weapon on both out of the receiver position and on kickoff returns here tonight. Big third down once again. Floyd quick hitch once again, complete to the right side. Good for first down yardage inside the 15 yard line. Same thing over and over, Kirk. Yep. This time the target, Josh Stewart. They just decide throw right or throw left. Yep. Done a good job of uh, neutralizing that pass rush as uh, Rufus Quinn a little slow to get off the field for Oklahoma. Actually, we've got another player on the near side. I can't see him up against the boards. It's like an Omaha player. Nope. Omaha trainers assisting Oklahoma tonight. Can't see a number. We'll get that for you shortly. Well, they're putting, they're putting their receivers in position to get that yards after a catch. You know, nice, short, safe pass, and, and, and they, they're making use of it. So I, I don't think it was a secret coming into tonight's game that Oklahoma, or that Omaha was going to be dominant on the pass rush. Uh, maybe a little advantage, but again, it was, it was a preseason game, but definitely showed that in the in the preseason game last week that was available for everybody to see. And a great game plan so far by Oklahoma just to come in, as you said, quick passes, either zero or one or two-step, even three-step drops from Floyd, but you're seeing the veteran mentality of him. He knows get rid of that ball immediately and then uh, make something happen after the catch and it's really taken the pass rush out of the game so far. Yeah, of course, obviously in the pistol or shotgun or whatever you say, I mean, he can see things right away. You very, very quick. As we see him walking off the field, the injured player is Andre Taylor, the receiver who's been all over the place. He kick returner for Oklahoma, so we'll keep an eye on him if he's able to come back into this contest, but that's a big blow for Oklahoma offensively. Back to action. Third down and three. It's all been four down territory for Oklahoma tonight. Expect the same here. Men are in motion. Floyd will keep it himself. Looking for the first down. He has it inside the ten. Nearly gets to the five. It's going to be first down and goal for the Flying Aces. Actually, according to the chains, Kirk, looks like they gave him the first down on the last play. It's going to be second down and five to go from the seven-yard line. He lost that with the injury there that they had moved the, moved the chains. So we'll reset, and since the late part of the first half, it's been the same for more information the entire game for Oklahoma. There's two wide receivers on each side set. Floyd Girl, has Girl. time. He's looking to tuck it under. Now tries to force it, and it's nearly picked off. It's going to be third down for Oklahoma. Dudley Giles nearly got the interception. Boy, those offensive linemen are latching on. I mean, they just, they're just they good footwork, the whole thing. They are, nobody can't, they can't get past them. Fortunate for Oklahoma that Floyd didn't tuck that one under because I think he could have probably at least got the first down. But thought he had a man in the end zone and tried to force it in there. Third down for Oklahoma. 
they can get a first down just inside the two yard line. Same formation. They're going to try the sweep. Turns it up field. Brought down at the five yard line as Josh Stewart gets about a yard or two on the play. And Richard Davis will go for it on fourth down. Again, they can get a first down just about the two yard line. Another big moment for the beef defense. See if they can force another stoppage here as Oklahoma has not been able to put Omaha away quite yet. Trying to recapture their advantage. Yeah, there it is. Flag on the play. He's brought down oh. by Wills. Oh, we got it. Wills gets his sack. Floyd thinks the penalty's on Omaha, and it appears it's going to be. What, they got an offsides call? Harold Wills got into the backfield, finally got to Floyd. No, we'll and actually, it's a hands to the face on Oklahoma. And, and Oklahoma can't believe the call. It's going to back him up 15 yards. Actually, correction, they'll decline the penalty, and that'll be the change of possession. So the defense stops them once again. They'll see if they can take advantage. 354 remaining here in the third quarter of play. Omaha trailing by 10. And we're gonna have a timeout on the field before Omaha gets started. So it's Omaha's done a good job here in the second half of trying to get back into this game, but had an opportunity in last possession and that interception. We're seeing some rookie mistakes yes. from the quarterback. Uh, it's part of the growing pains. You, you knew you were going to see that. Uh, the last one was right into the breadbasket, the linebacker, but uh, we'll see how Sweeta handles it. What we have seen from him so far is appears to be a short memory from the kid. Yeah, and it, on that pass, really, he, he went to the short man, and, and the the uh, the linebacker was just in in the zone, and he was there. There was there was I I don't know if he was looking at the receiver five yards behind him, um, but obviously he just he threw it right to the linebacker. Watching Omaha beef football, we appreciate you joining us on Pluto TV this season, opening week here in the CIF three regular season contests. Omaha will be off next weekend. And it will return to action as they travel to take on Sioux City. In Sioux City, two weeks from tonight. And that's a rivalry that uh, B fans, of course, and Sioux City fans don't like to win that game, obviously. But it's been pretty one-sided in the regular season for Sioux City over the last five years, Kirk. Yeah, it has. And uh, back in the old league, it wasn't much, much of a contest. But Omaha with the lone win, I believe, in the last five seasons in that division championship game where Omaha went on to the league championship game two seasons ago. But other than that, during the regular season, Sioux City has pretty much had Omaha's number. Omaha hoping to get right back on the correct side of that, but have bigger things to worry about at the moment as they trail Oklahoma, an expansion franchise by 10. 3.54 remaining here in the third quarter of play. Omaha defense just stopping the flying aces on downs. Two big stops for the defense here in the second half. It's what they needed, and they needed to pair that with a couple offensive successes. We'll see what they can do here. Sweet is back under center. They're going to fake that jet sweep. Give it to Bray. Bray out to cross the 20. Lunges forward, picks up eight or nine yards on the play. It'll be second down and short. Well, we definitely do have a run game. Game plan was to keep it on the ground as much as possible tonight. They've had to throw it a little bit more with the disadvantage that they've encountered late in the second quarter play and into the 
second half. Puts Prohaska into motion. They get, find Jones, and he gets bounced around, but I think he's going to have enough for a first down. He does. And a fresh set of downs for Omaha. Good inside-out uh, tackling by, the, by uh, the Aces defense. They pursued the ball very well. Ball at the Omaha 24-yard line. Beef trail by 10. Here we go. And off is DeBray. He has room across the 20, the 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Omaha. Omaha. Beef. You. Antonio Bray for 26 yards, and the Beef are within four points with extra point to come. Oh, boy. That was an exciting play. We've talked about it. There's been room between the tackles tonight. And Antonio Bray found the hole and took that one home. As we watch it again, just a nice, easy handoff. And once he got through that first level, had Green AstroTurf in front of him and scores for Omaha. Zeke in for the extra point. Good snap. Kick is up, and he is good. He's, he's money, isn't he? So far, so good. 2.39 left in the beef. Once trailing by 17, or now within three, it's 41-38. And, uh, boy, you never count anybody out in this game, do you, Kurt? No, not at all. Not at all. We could, but the running game has been good to us. So it's been an exciting week one through nearly three quarters of play. Omaha. You assume didn't take a team lightly coming in, but uh, I mean, I'll, I, I will tell you, I am impressed with what I've seen from Oklahoma so far. Uh, they don't look like they've never played together as a team. No, no, not at all. And have a have a decent offense, obviously, and uh, not necessarily a dominating defense that we've seen so far. But if you put points on the board, it doesn't really matter. Well, you know, like I can say in this league too, if you have an experienced quarterback, there's a lot. Of of, of good receivers out there, and I mean in this league. I mean, they're, they're that size of ball player and type of ball player are all over, really. And as we talked to Richard Davis at halftime, it was before the game, you know, that's what we discussed was he led an expansion franchise last year in Bismarck, went with a rookie quarterback. He really thought that hurt them and decided to go with the veteran quarterback this year, and uh, so far it looks like he's made a decent decision as Joshua Floyd has really helped out tonight offensively. Here's the bouncing kick. New kick returner as Taylor is now injured. Picked up out the 10, 15, out to the 20. Good return for Josh Stewart who is now returning kicks for Oklahoma. So put a little asterisk in your notes as Andre Taylor Jr. no longer returning kicks. He was injured in that last series. He's been uh, impressive, both returning kicks and on offense, but now not available for the Flying Aces. Beef looking for another stop. So far, so good in half number two. They've cut into a 17-point deficit, now trail 41-38. A little different formation now for the Flying Aces as they try to complete it. They do on the right side. Stopped after a short gain near midfield. It's going to be second down and seven. Jordan Payne on the completion. Good for three yards. Second down and seven. Back to their base formation. Floyd puts the receivers in motion, drops back, wants to throw, has time. It's complete on the right side. Good for another 10 yards inside the 15. Move the chains once again. The flying aces are threatening. Minute to go here in the third quarter.
Jones puts the receivers in motion. He has time, tucks it under, and puts it off the hands. And out of play of Payne. Incomplete, second down and 10. Had his man, just couldn't connect. I really think that Stewart's their go-to guy. You know, they went, they ran him deep and brought the guy in behind him. So he was really getting the attention of the defensive backfield. Josh Stewart out of Oklahoma State. We mentioned earlier, did have a little bit of camp time with the Tennessee Titans of the NFL. And, uh, you know, he, he's the type of player, you know, that may not make it a full season in the CIF from what we've seen so far. Has pretty good hands. Yeah. Well, if he's played at Oklahoma State, he knows, knows they, about they the know passing about, yeah. yeah, they know about that wide open offense. Ball's at the 14 yard line, 30 seconds to go. We have a stoppage. And, uh, Omaha is going to call timeout as they are short a man on the field. Marvin Jones not happy. Courtney Grixby joining along the defensive backs coach for Omaha as the wrong personnel is on the field. Yeah. Boy, you can't waste a timeout like that. We now have a timeout, 30 seconds to go. A little confusion if we have a timeout or not. I'm not sure what happened there, but they did not charge him a timeout, Kirk. And there's no penalty on the play. There you go, there there's you the go. There's a handoff and they stack him up. But still, I thought he got a yard, but they're gonna say he was down at the 15. So no gain as time is going to expire here in the third quarter of play. So we're going to head to quarter number four. It's a three-point ball game. Omaha trailing by 17 at the half, or at early in this half. Now behind by three, going to come back, start from fourth quarter, and try to stop this third and 11. Again, Kirk, I'm not quite sure what happened on that play before. Omaha only has seven players on the field. We have whistles. Uh, it would appear that Omaha's calling a timeout to correct the personnel situation. But the end result, there's no time off, off the board, and there's no uh, penalty assessed. So it ends up being an official stoppage play. Not sure why. No, I'm not either. I, they're talking it over, but yeah, I have no idea. And being over by the bench, you really don't know what happened when somebody hollered something, whatever. You don't you don't know where. It... So Omaha wins the third quarter, pulls within three points. And they've done pretty much what they needed to do, as we discussed at halftime. Outside of the interception, Omaha may be back in control of this contest, but it's going to be a big third down for the Flying Aces and for Oklahoma, or and for Omaha. Again, as we discussed, they're going to go for it on fourth down as well, so oh, yeah. it, it's, it's a situation where you're going to have to come up with two plays. Yeah, you know, too, the, the fact of having a shorter quarterback and, and being a defensive lineman, I mean, uh, if you if the guy was six three or whatever, your aiming point you're going to hit him in the shoulder and the chest. But when he's five nine, you hit him in the head. Other scores in the CIF uh, early fourth quarter: Duke City all over Wichita, 63 to 17. Final score: Amarillo defeating Salina, 63 57. Wow. So at least one good game going on in the CIF. We have a close one here, probably unexpectedly. If you noticed on the back of the Oklahoma Flying Aces jerseys, uh, you have an E-580 in the name area. And what they kind of told us is the Flying Aces, obviously the airplane is the, is the theme there. And, they all have the tail numbers on them. 
Okay. So they decided to give themselves tail numbers. Well, E is uh, Enid for Enid, Oklahoma, and 580 is the area code of the Enid area, so your E580. See that all over their gear, and that's the E580 on the back of the Oklahoma jerseys. Back to action to start the fourth quarter of play. Third down and 11 for the Flying Aces. Floyd is going to tuck it under. He wants to run. He had a blocker. Picks up a few yards. He needed 11, but he's only going to get two or three. And it's going to be a huge fourth down. Kwame Bell. Leaves the field. Looked like may have been favoring a leg there. That'd be a big loss for Omaha. Russell Denny checks in. Along with Brandon McRae and Harold Wills on the defensive line for the beef. And Richard Davis understands that this is a big play. He wants to take his first time out and discuss it before firing off fourth down. Yeah, they, you know, field goal, uh, you, there's nothing given. It isn't giving him a big advantage. It'd be a win for us, really. Well, they're definitely going to go for it. It's a three-point game. It's, it's a situation we're starting to get late now in the fourth quarter, and if you can make it a two-possession game again, yeah. obviously a major advantage, and uh, wants to make sure he has the right play out there. And he'll discuss it with his offense. Omaha. Beef opening up the season here tonight. First regular season of the first regular season game of the season. Coming into a bye week, and then we'll head up to Sioux City. Taking on the Bandits on April 6th, and then back here at Ralston Arena a week later as they'll host the Wichita Force. April 13th is the next home game. Get your tickets at BeastFootball.com. Look forward to seeing you out here at Ralston Arena. Fourth down for the Flying Aces. Watch number five. Fourth quarter. Men in motion. There Floyd. he is. There he is. Here comes a rush and it's say? complete. Touchdown to number five. What I say? Josh Stewart. Been calling his name a lot here in the second half. And Oklahoma's made this a two-possession game once again. You have to have a feeling that's what they were talking about in the huddle was, you know, telling the quarterback, make sure you don't give up the play immediately because Floyd likes to take off. Yeah. They felt good about that play, and Stewart ran the route, got open, and made the completion for the touchdown. That's his favorite side on the right-hand side of, the, of that offensive line with its room. Mathis to make it a 10-point game. The kick is up, and it is good. So early fourth quarter. Flying Aces back out in front by 10. 48-38. And it's back on the beef to see if they get some points. Omaha went down the field last time, responded with the touchdown. See what they're able to do here on the kick return. Courtney Grigsby out with the return team setting up the strategy on their kickoff return. Remember the Firewater Grill, 70th and Grover. That's the post-game party spot. Kirk will be there. I will be there. Hey, listen, if they can repeat what we had last week, it's wonderful. They really did a Sound good like job. Sound like a good time this. out there. They did a good job. Join us out there, and uh, if the beef can get back out in front, we will be opening the beer cooler for all the fans that come on out. So make sure you're at the Firewater. That is the post-game party spot, 70th and Grover.
So Mathis to kick off. We've been seeing the squib kick pretty much all night from him. He'll tee it up right this time. We'll see if he keeps it low, though. And uh, Omaha sending out a player late. They're short again on players. Now have eight on the field. And a big high bounce. It's fielded by Perry at the seven. Out to the 15 to 20. Stacked up midfield. Gets away into Fort, into territory of Oklahoma. Inside he's the 10. Keeps fighting. And he's down to the five-yard line. And what a great second, third, and fourth effort by Chris Perry to give Omaha first down and goal. And kicker got his helmet knocked off. See, he shouldn't be he shouldn't be chasing people like that. Watch this one again. He fields it at the seven. Has some blockers. Looked like he got stacked up at midfield and then just fights. Gets it all the way down to the nine-yard line. Sweeta under center, first and goal. Here's the handoff to Bell inside the five-yard line. Down to the fourth, second down and goal. Omaha trying to get back within three again. Thirteen. 25 and counting here, fourth quarter. Sweeta under center. Trips on the right side, two in motion. Hand off to Phillips, and he's battling. Gets stacked up at the one-yard line, and they're going to blow it dead before his forward progress takes him into the end zone. Good, tough run. Very good, good run by Calvin Phillips, the veteran, back with the beef this season. He was with the team two seasons ago on that playoff run. Take a look at this. He just tried to lower the shoulder. Good effort by Oklahoma, too, keeping him out of there. And uh, Omaha thought they may have got a little quick whistle there. Let's be third down and goal from a yard out. Give it to Phillips. Oh, 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 oh. Got movement and flags. They blow it dead. Did you see the signal by the right guard? To run, he was going to run over right guard. Looked like you it. See him patting himself on the hiney. Well, we got everybody pointing at everybody. We'll see which way this goes. And this one oh, will go against my. Oklahoma. It's going to be half the distance. It was about the one, so they'll mark off a few inches and let Omaha try it again. Now you see the. Nose tackle, Nose tackle jumping early there. And a big third down for the beef. That ball just outside the goal line. Sweetie could probably keep it himself, and he will try that, and they push him Got in. Him. He's touchdown crossed, beef. and it's a touchdown, touchdown beef. for Omaha. Sweeta fights in there, and... Uh, Got a couple extra shots on the quarterback after he went in there. He's feisty. Yeah, he is. Throws the ball back. He's lucky he probably didn't get a flag on that. But the touchdown for the beef, and they're back within four. We saw a little bit of that fire in, a, in training camp from Seth and uh, mixed it up a little bit one practice and really earned some respect from his teammates. Here's the extra point, and Zeke is off the upright. Says no good. So four-point game. 48-44, Zeke's first miss of the night. He'd been perfect thus far and had a field goal earlier tonight. And the beef are staying in it. Just need that defense to stop once again, huh? Need a break. Chuck Wright discussing with the officials, didn't like the extra hits in on the quarterback. The ex-quarterback himself standing up for his, his player, as you'd expect. Well, as we discuss, 
Flying Aces will come back up to Ralston Arena one time this year. Omaha will head down to Enid later this season. So this is a rivalry that'll oh, I'm sure. will we'll start quickly, especially with the competitive game. And then you see each other a couple more times. These teams will become very familiar with each other over the next couple months. Both teams looking for their first win of the season. What are you guys doing down there? Yeah, this is a, we see this a few times. The teams line up on the wrong sides. You tell it's early in the season. <laughs> yeah. Lots of scoring. You forget where you're at. 12-16 remaining in regulation. We have a four-point game. Oklahoma led by as many as 17. The lead is down to four. Tease it up. Stewart, who's filling in for Taylor on returns, awaits at the goal line. Low line drive kick over the head of Taylor. Gets the bounce and gets it over the wall into the net. And that's a great kick for Omaha as that will come out to the five-yard line. Special teams, Kirk. There you go. So Omaha... Looking at the field position game will make Oklahoma play the long field starting at their own five-yard line. Well, I think we got us a kicker. Been impressive thus far. Done good on kickoffs. Great one there, putting it over the wall with the touch in bounds. One for two on field goals tonight. Hitting from 39 yards out. And five out of six on extra points. So under 12 minutes to go. Omaha looking for a stop trying to get back out in front. They haven't led since early in the second quarter. Floyd puts the man in motion on the far side. Different formation. Flag in the backfield. Floyd is going to go for the home run. And it is overthrown incomplete. Get it, get it offside. We'll see if this is a, a legal defense. Thrown by the back judge. I'm wondering if it's a legal defense. And Floyd tried to take advantage and throw one deep. Officials discussing. Oh, it is going to go against Oklahoma. Could have been an offside. It looks like the high motion man might have timing well, might have been off. Thrown a by bit. the back judge, though. That's what's yeah. interesting. Let's see what the call is. I assume they'll decline the penalty as it would be half the distance to the goal line. Take the loss down, make it second down. So it's a legal procedure. The formation was illegal up here, Kirk. Yeah. They declined the penalty. It's going to be second down. Two receivers right watch wide. Five, watch five. Here's the pressure. They're going to go deep. Man-on-man -man coverage, and it's incomplete. Looking for five again, and why not? But it's incomplete. Good coverage on the play. Taylor Hawkins on the play for Omaha. He is actually closer to that ball than the receiver. But end result, big third down, forthcoming. Oklahoma at their own five-yard line trying to protect a four-point advantage. It's third down and ten. 
early fourth quarter of play. First game in franchise history for the Flying Aces. Two receivers in motion. Floyd drops back. He has time. Looks. It's complete. It's going to be short of the first down. He hit the wall. He hit the wall. He hit the wall. He's out of bounds. They think there's no contact. But it's be fourth down and two. I'd agree, Kirk. I actually wonder if that call was not correct. There was no contact. You could touch the wall without contact. There was the whistle, though, right away, but I'm not sure that call was correct and win at Omaha's advantage. But he hit the ground. Well, there's no contact. Pro rules for contact. But it's be fourth down. And Oklahoma is going to go for it. Play clock's at zero. Wasn't reset, we'll have to take care of that. And we'll have an official timeout while we figure out the clock situation. Officials reset the play clock. It's gonna be fourth down, long two, short three. Huge play coming up, under 10 to go. Lloyd's going to line up under center. Different formation, Kirk, than what we've been seeing. A short yardage package for Oklahoma. Lloyd's going to try, try to draw him off. Trying to make him jump. And they're not going to do it. Play clock's at zero again. And there's the flag. It's delay a game. There so we'll go. back there him up go. five yards. So I assume they'll kick. <laughs> or not. Yeah, here comes the kicker. No, he, Richard Davis is waving the kicker off the field. Interesting strategy to take the five-yard penalty in this situation when you intend to go for it. It looked like he had, had no intention of running a play on that last. Yeah. And now he's going to wave the kicker back out. Some confusion for Oklahoma. Play clock's down to 15, and they're going to change personnel. They're going to have to hurry. Play clock's under 10. And they're snapped down to five. Play clock's down to three. They're not going to get this off. I think they're going to take another penalty. It's at zero. And that's back-to-back -back delay of games on Oklahoma. So back them up another five yards, Kirk. There we go. So Oklahoma's played a solid game so far, but this last possession, you have to wonder as Oklahoma may be giving Omaha a great chance at field position. And they've had trouble with it. They've had trouble with the long snap before, too. We've seen that a couple of times. Calvin Phillips is awaiting a short kick if it doesn't get over the wall. Hey, pay attention now. And this is going to be about a 56-yard field goal attempt. He's it's going to go for the out wall. Bounds. That's a great kick. That's going to go out of bounds inside the 10. Let's see where they spot it, actually. It didn't hit the ground, so it comes out to the 25, 25. Kirk. And that was some help from the fans. That was some help. They reached over. Go down, so as we hit. discussed, you want to, you got to hit the ground if you're going to get that... Yeah. Get that spot. Instead, comes out to the 25. We'll find that fan and give him a good hustle. They get the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Last media timeout. This is a new uh, promotion here. It's the fan section of the game. Check out that trophy, Kirk. I know it. I've seen it in the office. It's lovely. It, it's big. I mean, it's, <laughs> well, yeah. that's probably the, <laughs> the most impressive part. So the fans rallying up as the beef need to find the offense and have a chance. Who would have thought this, Kirk, with the way that second half started? Yeah. Oklahoma getting the ball, adding to the lead, getting up by 17. 
and really had all the momentum and now the beef with a chance to take the lead on this possession. Yeah, you you would possibly think this being their first game too, with having those penalties down there, they just they aren't sure what was going on. I mean, there was a little, so much indecision. I'll tell you, and, and we talked about their coach. You know, he's a friend of ours. Yeah, we, we know him. But this game's intense. And being on the field for both sides of the ball, I I don't know. I, I don't think I'd wish that on anybody. That's that's a that's a full night. Yeah, very much so. He's feeling it too. <laughs> so Omaha with a chance to try to take the lead back. And they will start from their own 25 yard line. Also, the coaching from the field, no headset. So he's not getting assistance, you know, in his ear, like, you know. Our coaches have a, yeah. you know, communications with the sidelines. What I, I mean, this is a, this is a one-man effort. So here we go, Omaha, 25 yards away, trying to take the lead. 9:08 remaining quarter, number four. It's 48-44, Oklahoma. Men in motion. Here's the handoff to Bray. 2015. Down to the 10, a flag comes in late. I think they're going to get get a hold. A hold on Omaha, and that's going to back them up and negate a big run. And make it first and 20 for Omaha. Another momentum swing. You know, I, we've seen the big holes in between the tackle. There's a lot of holding in this game. We know that, right? Yeah. Uh, they got caught for it that time, but Bray had a head of steam. Wouldn't be surprised to see them try that a couple more times. You know, that was a, that zone blocking scheme that we have, and he, he was pu pushing him down. He must have grabbed him to push him down so he could break outside of him. Ball marked back at the B-15 yard line. First down, 20 to go. Prohaska in motion along with Bell. They'll keep it on the ground. There's Bray. Tries to cut back. He's behind. He needs a blocker. Sweden with a block. It's good for three yards. It'll be second down and 17. Nice effort. Quarterback coming in, laying down a block as well. Yeah. That'll fire up your team. Make it four yards as they spot it at the 19. Under nine minutes to go here in regulation. Omaha breaks subtle 10 on the play clock. Come on, guys. Need to get moving down to five, four, three, two, one, and that's going to be should have been a delay game. They don't call it. Serena tucks under. There's a flag on the play. But the play continues. He runs into Oklahoma territory. We'll check on the flag. It's going to go on Omaha. It's not the delay game. It's going to be an illegal motion. Field explain three men in motion. You can't do that in this league. And another mistake for Omaha. It's going to back it up. Second down at 23. They need to get to the Oklahoma 15 yard line. Sweeta under center. Puts Bell in motion and puts it off his hands. That's a lateral. He needs to get on it. And Oklahoma, I think, came up with the ball, Kirk. They did. Oklahoma with a big turnover. They tried to get the ball to Bell. It was a lateral behind the line of scrimmage. Needed to jump on it. Was unable to get it. And Oklahoma 
with a huge turnover. As you see that again, the pass looked like it was a little behind Bell. And a big recovery for Oklahoma. And Omaha's in a tight spot now. Donovan Logan out of UTEP with the fumble recovery. It's going to give Oklahoma a first and goal from the nine-yard line. Look and see where number five is lined up. Bingo, across the middle. Floyd tucks nope. it under. He wants to do it himself. Inside the five, down to the two. Pick up a seven on the play. It'll be second down and goal. Seeing some different formations coming in here as Oklahoma's trying to put this game away under seven minutes to go time now a factor not working in Omaha's favor Josh Stewart in that slot position on the left side they're going to hand it off keep it on the ground there's a touchdown that's too easy Kirk Heyer yeah Michael Nunnery out of Southern Arkansas the rookie takes it in from Two yards out, and that's a 10-point lead now for Oklahoma with the extra point coming. Yeah. Math is for the point after. Kick is up and good. 6.32 remaining here in fourth quarter. Omaha has dug themselves an 11-point lead, 55-44, or make it <laughs> dug lead. themselves an 11-point oh. hole. <laughs> yeah. Wrong way. 55-44. Game plan's the same, but the run out of time, Kirk. Turnovers. Costly. Turnovers and, and, and some goofy penalties, too, again. So Oklahoma comes into the slaughterhouse. Perry Flower Casino Field and hung 55 points on the Omaha Beef in week number one. Did not even play a preseason game. Did not exist a season ago. Looking to start the season 1-0. Dancing, regardless. So Beef could use another big kickoff return right here. Antonio Bray with Javon Bell await the kickoff. Yeah, they are dancing. <laughs> Here we go. Mathis lays that ball down sideways. He's going to play the turf on the kick. And he hit the wall upfield. And he'll be at the spot, but it's going to be near midfield. They'll spot it at the 22-yard line of Omaha. So here we go again, Kirk. Let's get a fast score here, guys. Seth Sawita, the rookie quarterback out of Concordia College. Get his first start professionally here tonight. And he's going to try to get his first fourth quarter comeback. He's going to need to do it. Six minutes and change remaining here in regulation. 11-point game. Puts some men in motion. we got another whistle. And this one's going to go against Omaha. What? Got to delay a game. I didn't see the clock that low, I thought. It 
does delay a game on Omaha. Be first down at 15. So back them up five yards. First down, 15. From their own 17-yard line, men in motion. Sweden drops go, 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 go. back, and he's going to scramble out to the 20 where he's tackled. Notice Kane Farkerson hasn't been in the lineup for a better part of at least this half, and maybe earlier. I don't see him on the bench, so I'm not sure what his status is. A weapon that Omaha usually has on offense. He took that big hit right down here in this end zone, so maybe it shook something loose. Second down, 13. Here's Bray, out to the 20, tries to find a hole. Midfield, got it, got it. inside the 20, and turns that into a nice game. Inside the 20 yard line of Oklahoma, and I think we got another penalty on the play, Kirk. I don't see the flag, but the officials are talking about it. Another holding call. They get Kareem Jones on the outside, trying to open up that edge. That's gonna be another 10 yard penalty. And beyond the yardage, it's the time that's expiring during all these plays as well as we're approaching the five-minute mark. And the beef trail by 11. They're going to need at least two scores. They have all three timeouts left. We're going to start needing to move with some urgency. Sweet out of the shotgun. Drops back, here's the pressure, tries to find some room, tries to put it up the Ooh, middle and hit, hit the, it. Ground, the ground, and Bell, Bell says he got it. He's arguing it quite vehemently, but they call it incomplete. Clock continues to run until you get inside the one minute warning. Come on, guys, Even on go. the incomplete pass. Come on, get in the huddle, let's go guys. Beef taking their time as the clock's at four and a half to go. They trail by 11. Sending the play in. Third down and 20. Ball at the Beef 13-yard line. Prohaska and Jones in motion. Prohaska got near the line of scrimmage. No flag on the play. Sweden's going to keep it out to the 15, the 20. Midfield. Pickup of about 12 on the play out to the 25 yard line. It's going to be fourth down, though, and about eight yards to go. Come on, guys. So, this is the game, Kirk. Yes. Richard Davis indicating make sure you keep him inside eight yards, that defense. Sweet under center. Here's the sweep. And it's going to be close to first down yardage. I think he got just across the chain. And he did. So the beef are still alive as we approach the three minute mark. Here we go. Here we go. And now they're moving the ball back a little bit, but they've already moved the chains and we've got confusion on the field. Clock stops while they discuss it. They signal the first down, they move the chains, then they move the ball back. Richard Davis wants them to go back and review. Well, there you go, we're in a review situation, Kirk. They're gonna see if he got to the first down yardage, if that knee got down early, and if it did, that's going to be a bad situation. He'll be turned over on downs. So a big review coming. Play, 
it looked like Bell was he was fighting for his last couple of yards, kind of staggering across. I thought he had the ball out there, but it was against the boards. We did not get a clear view from our vantage point. And they're going to check it out. So Omaha, 20 seasons of play. Trying to avoid the upset from the Oklahoma Flying Aces, uh, their first game in franchise history. It's coming down to a review right now if Omaha got the yards to gain for first down yardage, and they're checking it out closely on the sideline, as you see. If he's short, Oklahoma will take over on downs with 312 remaining in the fourth quarter and 11 point lead. Let's see what they came up with. Decision's been made. Oh, yeah, he's a little uh, upset. He said. So the beef are still alive as the first down will be upheld. Let's go get out of there and go. But the clock's going to start back up, and Omaha needs to get moving. Need 11 points. Sweeta has the team over the ball. Game clock starts back up under center. Phillips in the backfield, but they try to set up that screen. There's Bell inside the 15, down to the 13 against the wall. Good for about three yards, but the clock's under three minutes. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Be second down at seven. Clock continues to run. Omaha's huddling up. 244 and counting. Second down and seven. Sweet out of the gun, puts the men in motion. Prohaska and Bell. He's looking for Prohaska. He gets him inside the five and he stretches it over the goal line. Touchdown, Omaha. And the beef have pulled within five and likely a two point conversion to try to make it a three point contest. Omaha will go for two as they send in a play. 226 remaining, 55 to 50. Omaha still has all three timeouts. And plenty of time. We'll talk about the options. And Richard Davis wants to challenge that spot as they just showed a replay in-house here where uh, it's going to be close. Prohaska stretched that ball over the goal line, but we'll see if he hit the wall or was down short of the goal line. How many, how many protests do they have? Well, that was the first coach challenge. The last ones were, I believe, by the, by the officiating crew. There are situations which are automatically reviewed, like change of possessions. Get two coaching challenges, and they'll check again here. That's a scoring play. Richard Davis wants to take another look at it, and uh, unfortunately, it's gonna be close. If Omaha's score is confirmed, it's a five-point game. They're ready to go for two, make it a three-point contest. If not, it'll be third down and goal, or make it second down and goal from about a yard out. the three hour and 10 minute mark of this contest, Kirk. And we'll 
look at the results of the review. So the score stands, and Omaha will go for two. Not bad challenge by Richard Davis, so if you have it, that's a, that's a good one to use. Right. It just take more time off the clock. Take the know. time off the clock, and if you happen to get it, so be it. Take a look at it once again there, but you see it gets driven into the boards, which would be out of bounds, so that's what they were reviewing. So two-point play, trying to make it a field goal game. Sweet under center. Here's the handoff to Phillips. He's in, and we're within three. Calvin Phillips with a two-point conversion. And it's 55 to 52. So, Kirk Heyer, what do you do now? You have all three timeouts. You, I assume you kick it off and you play defense. Play still. defense, yeah. It's uh, a ton of time in indoor. You have the one-minute warning as well. And onside kicks in indoor are from your own goal line. So if they're unsuccessful, you're yeah. you're in deep field position issue. So final media timeout. Ricky Burtz, the owner of the beef. <laughs> He's active. Firing the crowd up. He's active. He told me to watch him on game day. He, he get the crowd going. He's, He's living up to billing. So here's the situation. Opening game of the week, Omaha. Trailing by three. They've trailed by as many as 17 in the second half. 226 remaining in regulation. Oklahoma. First game in franchise history. Looking to try to run this game out or get one more score. And... Uh, 226 in indoor. I mean, there could be multiple scores yet. Stuff happens. Yeah. We, we, got, we got plenty of time. Oklahoma, one timeout left. Omaha has all three. <laughs> and you notice I said stuff happens. Stuff does happen. <laughs> Crowds getting their money's worth tonight at Prairie Flower Casino Field at Ralston Arena. Would love to try to pull this one off and then high it over to the fire water grill for the post-game party. Zeke with the ball on the tee. See if he can maybe get this out of play and down to the five again. Here's the bounce. It's going to go to the wall and out of play. And it will be spotted right about the 10-yard line. And Omaha now has to come up with something defensively get that ball back in the hands of the offense. Two twenty-three remaining, 55-52 Oklahoma. Opening game of the season. Opening weekend in the CIF. Strap it up, here we go. Start the clock, game clock is running, approaching the two minute mark. We'll see how much time they take off the clock. They run it with 17 left on the play clock. Floyd has a receiver, there's Stewart again. Out to the 20, that's good for first down yardage to midfield. And a fresh set of downs and they can run another 40 seconds off the clock. Omaha's gonna have to start thinking about using their timeouts. Yeah. They have all three. One forty-five and counting down. Oklahoma content to take their time. Twenty seconds on the play clock. In no hurry, protecting a three-point lead. Ninety seconds in regulation. Floyd puts the men in motion. Snaps it with five on the play clock. Plenty of time. Get him! Get him! Get him. It. No. And it's incomplete. Looking for number five once again, Josh Stewart. And the clock will run down to the one-minute warning. Marvin Stewart, though, wants to, or excuse me, Marvin Jones wants to use the Beef's first timeout. Yeah. Took about five seconds to acknowledge it. 
We'll see if they put any time back on the clock with 1.12 remaining. Clock rules change after the one minute warning. So the clock still runs on the incomplete pass until the one minute mark. And Omaha uses their first time out, stop it there, try to get another stop and you have the one minute warning to get the ball back. You get the ball back with one, yeah, that's. If they get a short gain on this play, you let it run down to the one minute warning first and then see what happens on third down. Yeah. If you give up the big play, you start back over after the one minute warning with two timeouts. Second down and 10, ball at the 25. Here's no, no, the no, handoff. No, 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 no. Go. Is brought down behind yes. the line of scrimmage. And will they use another timeout here? 109. No, they'll let it go. Down to the one minute warning. And a big defensive play. As Kwame Bell came in with a stop behind the line of scrimmage. For loss of four yards on the play, it's going to be third down and 14. After the one-minute warning, 60 seconds left in regulation. Omaha still has two timeouts. It is not over yet, Kirk Heyer. No, that's good, too. I mean, two timeouts. I mean, you get the ball on offense, but we can get him stopped. Well, we know that uh, it'd be interesting to see if they do not get all 14 yards here, if then do they kick with the field position? They've gone for it on fourth down the entire night. Yeah. I have a feeling they'd still go for it on fourth down, try to control their own destiny, but but first, have to take care of down number three. And a field goal only gives them a six point lead, so yeah, it's. If Omaha is able to make the stop, as we mentioned, a veteran field goal kicker now on the roster for Omaha, Zeke Arivalo. He's been good from 39 already tonight. We'll have a chance to try to tie it up and get Omaha into overtime or get all the way down the field. See if they kick their first lead since quarter number two. But first, it's third down and 14. Yeah, I hope, I hope for an incompletion or maybe them with a tackle for a loss. It's going to put them farther back. Outdoor football rules now apply inside the one-minute warning. Incomplete passes would stop the clock. They need 14 yards. We'll see what they do. I keep it on the ground, Kirk. Two wideouts to the right side. Floyd puts them into motion. He looks downfield. Here comes the pass rush. And Floyd eludes it, has some room, gets out back near midfield. It's going to be fourth down. Omaha takes their last time out. Marvin Jones, man, showing that sprinting ability. Man, he just did a 4-4-40, I think, right there, showing that skill from his time as a linebacker of the New York Jets. Found Vernon and got the timeout. Timeout number two for Omaha with 49 seconds remaining in regulation. Actually going to put three seconds back on. Must have felt Marvin coming out with that timeout. Put that three seconds back on there. So now fourth down situation. We just talked about this. Fourth down about 12. Yeah. You know, if you kick, you make it a field position. If you don't get all 12 yards, you're given the beef, the ball, near field goal position. Yeah. They're going to elect to go for it. Huge play for Omaha. 52 seconds left in regulation. They flipped the formation. Whiteouts are on the left side. Here we go. Inside move, Kwame. Floyd. Inside, inside, inside. Pressure. They set up the screen. And no! Incomplete! Incomplete Omaha is held on downs. You can't throw a pass to a fat guy. That's a rule. He's ineligible. <laughs> and Omaha takes over. With 48 seconds left in regulation in Oklahoma territory. Trailing by three and has one timeout. 
Omaha trailed by 17 in the second half. They have battled back, have not led since the second quarter. Some big defensive stops, and they have a chance. Field goal would tie it. Touchdown would put them ahead. See if they can maybe pop one loose. They got Antonio Bray in the running back position. Sweeta under center. Men in motion. Here's the bell. Bell out to the 20, the 15, 10. Out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. Clock stops with 43 seconds remaining. It's going to be first down and goal Omaha at the 8-yard line. So Omaha in position to use the clock. Use that again to get running wide. If you got to run out, you get out of bounds. I'm going to save your first down. First down and goal. 43 seconds remaining in regulation. 55-52 Oklahoma. You assume rookie quarterback, you're going to keep it on the ground. Bray is in the backfield. There's Bell. They fake it to him. Here's Bray. It's a hey, hit by Touchdown! have taken the lead with 38 seconds remaining. 58-55 point after to come. Omaha has battled back from a 17-point second-half deficit. Come on, guys. And have taken their first lead since the second quarter. With 38 seconds remaining in regulation, and Zeke going to try to put him up by four. This four. is a big kick to make him try to get a touchdown to take the lead. No pass or no rush four. on the kick. It four. is up, four. and four. it is four. good. And Omaha is ahead 59-55. You know what that means. <laughs> the beer vault will be open if they can hold this lead for another 38 seconds with the Firewater Grill after... This contest. Wow, what a barn burner to start off the season. That's my favorite vault, you know. That is your favorite vault. <laughs> you have to share the 59. That's I know. Well, I wasn't expecting this for opening week. No. This could be hard to top. But importantly, you need that defensive stop. I mean, we oh, know they time. can score quickly. 39 seconds or 38 seconds plenty of time to get down the field but yeah they have to score a touchdown field goal does no good uh, what do they have for timeouts left here one timeout a piece so it starts with field position on the kick Josh Stewart back deep, as we mentioned. Andre Taylor had been returning kicks, was injured in the second half and left the game. Come on, Zig. Final 38 seconds to go. Got to avoid the big return. Likely to keep it on the ground. Yeah, There's a low line bounds. drive kick. Over the head, but snagged by Stewart to the 10, the 15, out to the 20, and they contain him. Bring him down the 22-yard line. Five seconds off the clock, make it 33 seconds to go in regulation, four-point game. Oklahoma needs the touchdown. One timeout for the Flying Aces. We've seen them connect deep downfield. They got to prevent Marvin Jones defense needs one more stop number five Stewart you gotta watch it here's their favorite formation Floyd puts the receivers in motion he looked off sides no flag on the play Floyd's gonna run for it he's brought down by Wills big stop by Wills at the 20 yard line clock continues to run down to 24 seconds they're trying to hurry up save the timeout 21 seconds 20 Unorganized, they're gonna have to get the playoff down to 15 seconds. The clock continues to run. Turn, turn around 12, 11, 10. They're gonna eat the timeout down to seven seconds. Floyd flags on the play, and you have to wonder about that clock management for Oklahoma. 
as we're down to six seconds after the penalty. You know what they can run out of that out of that formation. They run a hook and ladder. Officials are still discussing the call. What I'm wondering is there a runoff on the offensive penalty on the clock if it's a procedure foul. Well, yeah, with only six seconds left, get the yard, you know, get yourself a cushion, get him back, take him back. It would appear we're going to be down to the final play. You have to wonder about that. The play ended. About 30 seconds left. It took them 24 seconds to get up to the line. They had a timeout left. And uh, unable to get the playoff. We're waiting for what the penalty is. Not sure what the discussion is. Like I said, not sure if there's a runoff involved. Because the penalty should be pretty straightforward. I think they're going to come and... There is. There's a 10-second runoff, right? No? I don't know. We're going to Here we go. Nope. So they reset the clock to eight seconds. They mark off five yards. They'll be at the 15-yard line of Oklahoma. They're 35 yards away from the end zone. They do have one time out. Clock should start on the ready, but it does not. The, ho the hook and ladder, the hook and ladder. Not sure why the clock would not start in that situation. Here comes Floyd. He has pressure. It's going downfield. And it's thrown into the seats. Two seconds to go. One second to go. Can't get the home clock to run out. Oklahoma's going to get one more chance. Oh, here's the game, Kirk. One second to go. 59-55 Omaha. Richard Davis uses that final timeout. He needs a big play. He wants to make sure he has it out there. What a game. Week number one. Fans are fired up. Want to make the stop and head to the Firewater Grill to party. Open have, up the beer vault and... I have to make one stop before, though. Not even going to ask where. Yeah, everything in front of you guys. One second to go. Final play of the game. One team's going to be 1-0, the other 0-1. Expansion team. Oklahoma Flying Aces giving Omaha Beef all they could ask for tonight. Omaha Beef trying to open up season number 20 with a thrilling come from behind victory. It all comes down to this. One second. Floyd takes a snap. Time has expired. Here comes the pass rush. Oh! The Beef win! The Beef win! No flags on the play. The Beefs have come back and have defeated Oklahoma. 59-55 to in one of the best games we have seen at Ralston Arena. And what a way to open up season number 20. Wow. Oklahoma came into Ralston Arena and gave the Omaha Beef everything they could have asked for and was, quite frankly, not expecting tonight. The Beef found themselves trailing by 17 in the second half of play and rallied to come back and defeat the Oklahoma Flying Aces 59 to 55. Well, join the party at the Firewater Grill. It will move over there. The beer vault is open. 59 free beers will be 
handed out over there, 70th and Grover Street. We will be back with you next home game. The Beef will be back in action two weeks from tonight in Sioux City. Watch the Don Igo Coaches Show before that game two weeks from now. Final score from Prairie Flower Casino Field at Ralston Arena. Omaha 59, Oklahoma 55. For Kirk Heyer and everybody with Omaha Beef, this has been a production of the Omaha Beef Football Network. Good night, everybody.